Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of Desperate Gamble, Star Wars Desperate Gamble, uh, Empire and Edge of the Empire campaign. Yeah, there's a lot of colons I could put in there, you know. Yeah. Boom! Presented by colon, Present, presented roll, by colon, roll 20. colon twenty colon app. Guaranteed colon. to be a better <laughs> episode nine than most of canon. <laughs> ooh, ooh, you're setting the bar so low for me. Okay. Right. Who wants a kiss? Who wants a kiss? Right. No. Unexpectedly. <laughs> and stupidly. That's so gross. I'm a frog person. Oh, I love yeah. to kiss lips. unexpectedly. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's a that's a great opening. Um. Thank you, everyone, for for joining. Uh, we've been we've been off for a couple weeks because we've just had unavoidable mishaps every Friday for the last two weeks. But we're finally we're finally back once again with our with our show. We're not gone. I swear, we're still alive. Um, how's everybody been in in the interim in the time uh, that we that we have not seen each other? Anything anything interesting? Anything cool? going on i had to wait i i managed three weeks you had you had to wait three weeks i had to wait three weeks to show off my new star wars t-shirt oh yeah here, no here show us go, yeah lift, lift it up here you lift. Go. cat atat hell yes that's the good shit isn't that that's a, how exciting my life is yeah there we go. Uh, yeah uh, i see what you're exactly. doing yeah guys Good puns. I, I don't. You, you I don't know something what... Aki didn't need to yeah, speak. Yeah, Aki, go ahead. Yeah. No, you started talking first, and then I just, you know, didn't realize that you were trying to create a full sentence. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. As people, as people, I understand. Uh, often. I understand. Are, yeah. So, so that was my bad. What about what about you, Aki? Anything, anything cool the last two weeks? Uh, continuing to work on my altered carbon manuscript. Made mm-hmm. some really good progress this week that I was really proud of. Um, it was nice uh, to finally feel as though I had accomplished something. I'm like this close to being ready to start doing some other stuff on that thing, Ooh. and I'm very I'm very happy to finally have reached that point in my work on the book because the appropriate pinnacle yeah yeah i'm finally hitting like a major milestone in it and i'm i'm very very pleased and i'm so excited i can't wait to bring it to the world show you all what i've been working on i look forward to seeing it when i can ridiculous Um, they uh, i i i I threw all of my most ridiculous ideas at it and and what it it should be fun (laughs) i feel like that's how good ideas start and in fact a lot of the ideas for this show were a uh, discord full of nerds throwing their most ridiculous shit posts at me and then me making some of them canon and then leaving some of them behind you know it's like it's most most of this game is also that so well uh, hopefully skydance approves that's the <laughs> that's the big one <laughs> how about you andrew anything anything fancy over the last two weeks or not fancy but cool and interesting you know well i got my first dose of the vaccine oh Oh, which is nice the vaccine yeah um and very important for me to be able to like do anything so i'm pretty stoked about that yeah i know that that's great um they don't open it up here for everybody until may 10th so i haven't been able to make an appointment yet but i'm looking forward to being able to um pretty soon uh yeah, Alberta's been uh, in the news a bit <laughs> about their treatment. About of, how much of a clusterfuck uh, it is. Yeah, their yeah, particular treatment of this. So, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, we allowed to swear on the front page. I don't know. Of course we fucking are. I don't know. Yay! It doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, pl- I'm playing it like I would always play it. So. Yeah, I'm not looking at chat. Sorry, everyone. And I, I, don't, I, don't think, for me. I don't think we're there yet. It's fine. Don't worry. Um, oh. <laughs> It's next oh, okay. week, and we try to Why keep then? it PG thirteen. I can do that. Oh, it's next. It's next week. Bunny told me it was this week. Wait, it's next it's week. Just, I'm so confused. Ginger. Maybe it's this week too. Maybe. It's what do I do with all this right, anxiety cool. now? All right, great. Why did I save it all up? That's, that's fine. Bunny told me it was Where this week. Put so. it? Uh, Either way, I have, we're I've here had, to play a game. I've had conflicting reports. Yeah. So I, you know, either way, we're here to play a game. Yeah. Um, You're right. I. Uh, in the past two weeks, I one of the 
Fridays we took off was because I was sick. So I'm I'm sorry about that, friends. You uh, do not have to apologize for but, taking care uh, of your physical form. But we are mm. we are indeed back in business, and we should talk about where in business we are because I'm sure a recap would be would be helpful mm. to those of us who have not looked at this game for two weeks. Um. So allow me to re-enlighten everyone as to our current situation. So our lovely players recently went to go and talk with the Fog Wardens out in the jungle. Uh, they had some discussions about the conflict with Utico and um, Zyle learned some stuff about, you know, speaking to the planet or what have you in a very mystical kind of a way. Um, there were some... There were some statements of like agreements to help with things, or you know, the other other such uh, vague sort of alliance related statements, uh, except for Crino, who is very standoffish about it all. Who, by the way, Gabe isn't here this week and won't be going forward for quite some time until they guest star once again. I'll be looking for another cast member. Um, <laughs> I'm still working on that. Um, uh, and Crino got Utico sort of like involved in that conversation by uh, opening his comm and sharing the the dialogue with an outside source. Um, and when everybody got back to when everybody got back to Vote City, there was a ton of acti like Utico activity about the Sunderer, um, the crash star destroyer that had been mentioned previously. Ruined um, everything. Only in the yeah. secret star destroyer. <laughs> so that that's going on. Um, you've also managed to acquire, or not yet acquire, but will soon in this episode have acquired and have paid for a a speeder uh, uh, that you can only use. Um, a, a a nice like, basically the Star Wars equivalent of a car, you know, um, and. Uh, there was promises made that you would lose, that you would uh, like purposely throw a speeder race, and that's why you got a discount on it. Um, so I don't know if not showing up counts as throwing, but like that's you know you could I do that. Can't think of a bigger way of throwing a race than just not showing up for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you signed up, Mongums. Mongums got your sign up all already and and set as usual. Um, and I think that's just about where we were. Like, we just finished getting the speeder, and we were trying to make decisions about, like, what the three of you now, because Crino has... Crino went to have a private meeting and hasn't sort of, like, reemerged um, from, from... Went up to space and shot a guy. Yeah. What, <laughs> what the three of you are going to do now, um, based on, you know, the, the timing and based on, like, what you think is important basically. Oh, the other thing I should mention is that the Imperial droids were getting sort of like requisitioned to assist uh, Utico in their efforts to you know, get, get to the Sunderer and harvest it for parts, presumably. Yes, um, which may become very important if, it may, I, it may. if I have a plan here. You have? Oh, you have a plan? I do like I have, I have a thought. I have the the beginnings of a plan. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, we were gonna do industrial sabotage on the vehicle shed. Oh yeah, that Utica. was the other thing you were. Yeah, you were thinking oh, about doing. Oh yeah. Was blowing up some Utico, uh, like uh, cutters and uh, you know people movers and so forth to try and Im impede their efforts. Um. Okay. Cool. I think that's where we were. Uh, in terms of like a good setup. Um, I always like to start with sort of a, you know, what has everybody been up to, you know, over the evening or what have you. We had Zyle, like, or not Zyle, we had uh, Crino go and have that meeting, but, like, what are the rest of you sort of doing with your, your night? Is it just rest and get ready for the next day, or, um... Do we want to roll all the yeah, stuff that we need to roll? We should roll that stuff, correct. Um... Let me clear the destiny pool uh, so that you may roll our our destiny. Just clear this pool. There we go. Okay, so you can roll some destiny dice for me, some force dice. Okay, two black. I like that. No. No. Three, three black. Oh. I like that. All the players rolled and gave me all dark side points. 
Wonderful. There's no oh. fourth player, so three it is. Oh um, no. Let's uh, let's also get obligation coming in. Come on, let's let's oh, go for no. the full double. Oh, elf, I don't know how to tell you this, but I decided that we're evil now, so the dark side points are actually the ones that we use. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. sure. Now right. the bounty hunters. Now, gone. now that now that yeah. the one person who likes to shoot people a lot is gone, you've decided to be evil. I see. Um, <laughs> The other thing we, of course, have to do is roll our wonderful obligation dice. Uh, there are only three of you, so uh, one to nine is Mabel, uh, ten to nineteen is Omni, and then uh, twenty to twenty-nine is Sile. Because I think Crino was the one who had the extra, mm, um, if I remember correctly. Yes. Boop. No obligations today. You have. You have. Ooh. missed that particular uh, that particular pain in the butt for the moment. We obligation free. Yeah, just like I wish my life was. Um, oh, goodness. Uh, okay. So, what's the game plan, friends? Because you, you're down a bounty hunter and he doesn't appear to be sort of like re-emerging, you know, the next morning. He's you have you saw him go off to, like, talk to some Utico folks, and you, you kind of haven't seen him come back. Um, you run off again? I'm starting to think he doesn't like us very much. Not a very reliable sort. Um, So, Elf, I'm sorry. You were saying we have, like, overnight plus a yeah, little bit of so, time. Yeah, so to give you a timeline, um, you've got sort of the evening plus the, the night. Um, and then, uh, I said the speeder race was in two days. So you've got like the day, then the speeder race is the day after. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have about, I don't know, like 36 hours ish of time before you're like your, your obligatory speeder race entry will come up and you can ignore it or not, but that's when it happens. Um, Okay. Well, let me let me enact phase one of my plan here. Okay. I like um, which is that Mabel is going to spend the evening and possibly the overnight period, um, going around and finding all of the like droids that she knows who are working with Utico, um, and you know very surreptitiously or very on the on the quiet trying to see who is willing to. Um, you know, look the other way or uh, okay, go on strike or all these kinds of things. Sure. So you, you sort of spend the, the evening slash night uh, roaming about to your various contacts in Vote City, uh, surreptitiously asking them if they're willing to, like, fuck with you to go, basically. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, can you give me a roll for that? Uh, there's a bunch of social skills. I think this would be, depending on the method you're taking, I assume you're not intimidating people. Um, no, no, not intimidating uh, anyone. So I think that would make it probably uh, charm. Charm, which I do have. So yeah, this is very much uh, Mabel in her mode as a uh, organizer and you know, low-key yeah. revolutionary I figure. Think, I think Rabble I think I can give you a boost die based on that, like, you have, like, some level of pull with most of the, like, community of Imperial droids. Um, yeah, spend, like, I'll give you, like a, hundreds of credits. I'll give, you, like, yeah, a, I, I'll give you a circumstance bonus on that, but I will also upgrade it with a dark side point that I'm going to use immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so you now have one light side point, team. Mm -hmm. Uh to uh represent the oppressive force of of like utico authority in the in the area yeah this is definitely like a risky thing that maple is doing yeah so. and especially if you're asking other people to take risks you know like some people are going to be less risk averse or more risk averse right? so dice pool is ready for you when you want to oh advantages but no successes unfortunately no success so no, no failures either. No failures either. It, you know, it's like it's like a neutral kind of a situation. It's, nothing terrible is going to happen. Um, but what I will say is that you find that uh, many of the droids that you come across are like 
far less receptive than you thought they would be. Um, mm-hmm. As if the idea of them being given purpose again has... In, yeah, they're just like in, happy to go back to in work. In some ways, like yeah, yeah, like galvanize a lot of them in their in their like task. Um, there are a few there are a few voices among your community who like listen to you or like you think would would help you if it like came down to life or death, you know. But there's not a lot of not a lot of desire to 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 push back against the like they're you know they don't want to bite the hand that's currently feeding them. Yep. Um. Yep. So to speak. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, Mabel, like, doesn't push anyone too hard if she's not, you know, hearing that they're receptive or whatever. So I don't think she's fully come out and asked anyone to, like, plant explosives for her or anything at this point. Um, She's a little bit too savvy to make that kind of overstep. So, yeah. No, I entirely agree with that. Um, What about uh, Omni or Xyle over the course of the evening slash night? Is there anything you want to get up to? Yeah, I would love to grab myself some um, schematics of cutters and, you know, laser fences and that sort of thing. Um, Okay. In case we end up doing this ourselves, I want to be as prepared as possible. So you're getting these things in, like, the market or...? Yeah. Yeah, or if I need to, I'll try and... Yeah, first I'll try and buy them, and then if not, I'll try and slice them. Okay. Um, going back to your, you know, your sort of back alley Deveronian contact who got you the slicing equipment to begin with. Um, yeah. You, you know, you approach the stall, and he's busy uh, tinkering with something or, or another. It looks like he's kind of packing up, you know, like the evening is wearing on, and he's he's getting ready to, you know, close down for the night. Uh, and you walk up, and he, he gives you a look that's like, oh, you. It's always trouble with you. Well, I wouldn't say exactly it's trouble. It's just... You're the only one that sees this side of me. It's the dark side of Omni. Well, you know, I'm used to dealing with people's dark sides. What can I do for you? Um, I'm looking for some schematics. Fairly standard above board, you know? Yeah, the way you state that it's fairly standard and above board definitely makes you think you're using them for standard above board practices. But hey, it's not up to me what you use them for. Uh, what kind of schematics are you looking for? Oh, you know, just, um, Unico scrapping type vehicles and equipment and some cutters hey, wait 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 hold on laser. hold on you, so what you're saying is you want Utico schematics you want stuff for yeah. their equipment yeah okay uh I want to help them let me see here well if I'm could ask them you know might be cheaper uh, no I, w- I would show initiative roll deception or something <laughs> what if i go for lying like, like i guess roll, no roll, no talking is good for me roll something for me yeah because that's all right all right, all right let me right. set the dice pull up for you okay we're good all right let's do it <laughs> Two failures. Okay. Oh dear. He gives you a look that's like you're you're being very unconvincing. You know, it is a it is a flat stare for a silent moment, and he smiles and goes, "You really should just stick to asking for the things you're asking for." Uh, and I don't care either way. But knowing what I know. It's going to cost you a pretty penny. Ooh. How much are we talking? Uh, a thousand credits. Oh. Now you and I both know they're not worth that much. 
do you want them? I have other ways of getting them. I just thought since I'm a repeat customer, we could build up some sort of rapport and future business. Yeah, credits uh, credits are what puts the food on my table. Rapport is worth shit. Uh, so, oh. thousand credits is how much they cost. All right. I'll go and speak to my financial advisor, and we'll see. We'll get back to you tomorrow, probably. Sure thing. I'll be around. Okay. <laughs> Waddle off. Very oh, poor Omni. <laughs> I do not have a thousand credits. Trying to lie is difficult for you, yeah. Too, In fact, trying green. to tell the truth is just <laughs> as difficult, to be fair. <laughs> No skills in He's just not a stuff. good talker, yeah. How about you? How about you, Zyle? Anything you're getting up to in the evening? Uh, I think uh, if they have the free time, Zyle probably heads up to that uh, professor or scientist person. Oh, yeah. You're going uh, go, to go see Haverford. And, yeah, and just, you know, do some research and studying and see see uh, how they can be of assistance, uh, what they can possibly learn. They're going to uh, drink up some knowledge so okay, so you go you go down to you know the floor that Haverford has his his uh, office on, and the lights are on, and clearly like the blinds are closed, but it's clear the lights are on, sort of thing, um, through the the glass of the like shop front, um, and uh, knocking on the door, the the Bothan is quick to you know come and you, you hear him from the inside of the the place going like yes yes I'm coming you know like walking over to the door, grabs the you know, it opens the door to like towards you. It's just this like sliding thing. Uh, and he says, "Oh, oh, it's you. Uh, come inside." Yeah. Oh, thank you. Closes the door behind you, like locks it back up, and says, "Uh, what can I um? Uh, do you want to see what we've been uh, uh working on?" Oh, well, that's why I'm here. I was hoping for a bit of an update. See if there's anything I could do to help or assist. He sort of uh. You know, pulls his what looks to be like sort of a, a like a dressing gown. You know, like he's been doing his research in his underwear almost. Um, uh, Never leaves his lap. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, and you know, wiggles his little his like walrusy mustache a bit, and uh, and walks back towards like sort of the back room and says, oh, "Come with me. It's fine. You can see what you're funding the efforts after all." Um, uh, I've been going over the. Uh, hollow recording, uh, f- fairly frequently, uh, and it's clear he like he has like several hollow displays with like different points of time of the same recording that like Mabel had made, uh, all open, and he's like clearly like cross referencing stuff. There's a bunch of notes and like various data pads scattered around the desks, and and uh, he he clearly has a system, but it's hard to tell what that system is just by looking at it, right? Like the file, well, the filing is uh, the filing is is wide open. I'm sure he well, knows where everything is, and that's all that matters. What I'm really interested in is what kinds of things does he watch while he's studying? Does he have lo-fi Star Wars beats? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, other. definitely the lo-fi Star Wars beats to study to, yeah. Um, that's, yeah, that's kind of weird. You never see people in Star Wars have like a YouTube video open <laughs> while they're doing stuff. That's because, I mean, you that's have because, to, like background noise. I mean, that's because Star Wars is a late seventies, early eighties vision of the future where there aren't YouTube videos to open to Why watch. Are there no radios? Um, no but, internet are there, in Star Wars. Yeah. Are there like really awkward radio shows on Vode? Is there like Vode? Well, I guess I'm not going to find out if I don't get to finish my scene. I mean, there's definitely a vote city right <laughs> Sorry, now, but, sorry. But I'm yeah. Just <laughs> so, get how, over yeah. No, it's I'm good. Sorry. It's good. There's, there is definitely a radio station, Dave. Um, but so anyway, uh, Haverford brings you brings you towards like a several of the open recordings on like these project hollow projectors, um, and says, uh, "I've been trying to." Uh, uh, parse some of the language you know I, it's difficult because we don't have any way to j- sort of translate any of it 
uh, one way or the other. But I have found something relatively interesting, uh, you know, in terms of what one might call interesting. Um, here, look, and he brings open, like, you know, the hollow recording fast forwards to a certain point, and he presses stop, and then starts the other one, and gets to the right point, presses stop, um, and says, each of the statues has that nameplate, or I think it's a nameplate now that I, you know, I've looked at them more significantly on the bottom. Uh, they all start with the same series of symbols or what have you, and we've heard that the, the language could be colored, so it, they may not be the same, the same, but the, the symbols are the same. Uh, which I think means they have some kind of, um, like the names have some kind of beginning that is all very similar. You know? uh, Perhaps the same color designation uh, is applied to names? Well, it, it could be. Uh, it symbols deviate after a few uh, blocks, so to speak, uh, going going uh, upward. But uh, uh, at least the beginning is, is always the same. And if I can find some way to figure out what that says, then we'll have a much greater understanding of the way they see themselves, you know, titles or or uh, uh, pronouns or, or what have you, very important part of uh, self-identification. And they all seem to have very similar ones. Interesting. I mean, that's a great breakthrough even even uh though we still don't really have a, a full grasp on how the language works I, it's I, I find it very interesting that there, there's patterns starting to emerge or even like similarities between uh um you know demarcations and stuff like even that's like a big thing it's uh, it's all i've been doing my dear it's all i've been doing is is uh cataloging any similarities that I can find that may contextually help me understand what the language might mean, what the word might be saying. If it is a word, it's hard to determine. But uh, context, context is how we will figure it out. And once hmm. we know one thing, the rest will be easier. I wonder if, if uh, the notion that their language might have been color-based uh, might also indicate uh, a nonverbal form of communication because, I mean, they were made of plants or potentially had some sort of plant-like um, uh, make a genetic makeup. I, I wonder if if their their communication didn't happen by way of some sort of like pollen distribution or spores or, or something like that. I mean, this is a, a a planet completely comprised of like mushrooms and stuff like that. And we have witnessed out in the in the in the wild that there are like species of these mushrooms that do kind of uh, let off some sort of something or other. Uh, it's very possible that uh, trying to uh, consider what the vocal form or non-vocal form, as you as you so suggest, might be of communication between uh, members of the society. When I can hardly figure out the writing, uh, this is all speculation. Of course. I mean, that, of course, it's it's nothing but hypotheses or theories at this point. I, I like just having somebody to talk to about it. Um, so I apologize if I'm muddying up your research with these. Oh, no, no, uh, no, it's, it's fine. And you hear a knock on the door, like, back on the outside, like, in the shop portion, so to speak, of the this room. And he says, uh, just wait here one moment. And okay. leaves and... You can hear him talking to somebody at the, like the door open, the like swoosh of the door opening, and you can hear him st talking to somebody. And uh, it's something like, "Oh, uh, we're closed at the moment. Uh, you can't, you, you know, you're not allowed to come in here. Uh, 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 come back tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll, I'll be around then. And uh, we're just, I'm just shutting up for the night. And uh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, not a problem. Uh, I'll. Uh, uh, good evening to you. And like closes the the door again. You hear the door close, and he and he walks back over to the back room and says, uh, "Trying to keep this all quiet. After all, uh, haven't had ma many or much time to keep the place open. Uh, not that I have a large demand of customers, but the local Utico Patrol is starting to get a little suspicious of my usage of the space. 
Uh, you see something I can do to help? Uh, I don't think so, unless you're willing to man a shop stall for or a, a shop room for several hours a day, but I'm sure you're bit too busy for that. Uh, well, I can't do it every day, but I, I imagine every now and then I have a, a free day here or there, and I'd, I'd be happy to lend a hand. Well, that's always appreciated, obviously. I'm, I'm not asking you to do anything uh, that would be... Um, too difficult. I don't. I don't think. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is if the, you know, the patrolman had somewhere else to be. But that's uh, <laughs> that's a little more complicated. I think. Yeah, setting up a distraction that would uh, get you to cough your back. I think would probably be a bit of an enterprise. Or well, they've all been very busy recently. It seems the last couple of days, all it's like a hive of bees been kicked up. Hmm. Wonder what that could be about. Certainly, I don't know. As long as it's not the ruins, then we're fine. In any case, that is excellent update, and I really appreciate it. Um, uh, by the way, do you do you have like any? Um, this is kind of a silly question. Do you have any like things that you like to do specifically when you're researching, like snacks that you like to indulge in, or or drink, or or something like that? Mm-hmm. And he like strokes his walrusy mustache uh and and says uh well there is a drink and you're going to think very foolishly of me for this I mean, with my image and all but there is a there's a drink that helps me stay awake uh for long periods of time and i like to make sure my my caffeine intake is is high during periods of uh, you know great great uh, uh mental strain uh, I I only drink uh, Rancor Rush, uh, Savage Sarlacc flavor. Savage Got it. I, I'll 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 have a look around, see if I can't uh, uh, rustle some up for you. Yes, of course. Thank you. I I, I have a, a case or two stashed away, but uh, always good to know where I can get more. Good to know. Rancor Rush, Savage Sarlacc flavor. Got it. All right. Um, I, I guess I'll be back soon um, for more updates. And if I if I come across anything uh, while out and about, I will bring it to you. Please, anything to do with these uh, these ancient Vodians, I'm more than happy to take off your hands. Of course. And thank you again, as always. And uh, um, yeah, I'll see you later. I'm sure you can find your own way out. <laughs> Definitely. I've tracked my way through worse. <laughs> of course. I'll lock the door behind you. And he, he like, you know, turns back to his hollow recordings and checks a data pad for something and frowns a little at it as he, like, turns around to leave. Um, yeah. So, there there it is. Um, so, if anybody, if nobody has anything else, uh, I assume everybody heads back to their, their lodgings and the night. I've got oh, you got something? Slicing to do. You got something? All right. Give it to me, Omni. Right. Well, talking to themselves uh, as they head back to their ship. All right. Well, I wasn't lying about having other ways of getting that information. So let's get out this handy dandy. Who does? And there's one of those. And I need that cable. And. Right. Let's so see what I can find. Where are you slicing? Like, do I say, have to be in the physical defense? You, say you, went, you said you went back to the ship, um, but slicing requires that you be at a terminal that has the things you want on it. So, like, there isn't sort of like a grand internet, so to speak. Like, you couldn't hack wirelessly oh, from your ship to to do it. You could like access a Utico terminal, like whatever terminal might be part of their computer system, and like go from there. But uh, you'd, you'd have to put yourself in some like in like a physical space for sure. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I totally didn't consider that. Um, in which case, I would, I'd love to go and try and find one. Yeah, of course. So, um, there are a bunch of Utico computer terminals uh, scattered around the the hallways, like the basic interface terminals that are 
that work as sort of like um, you are here style maps, you know, for the city. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like advertise uh, yeah, tours. Yeah, and basic databases about like the local shops or the local establishments, you know, like where you can find X or Y product, where you can uh, find a place to sleep, a place to, you know, it's like you know, search terminals basically. But they are all connected to like the Utico system, so. With a good with a good slicing uh, check, you could probably get a good look at one. But the thing about the hallways is that they're fairly busy generally, um, in terms of like if you're in the the main areas. Now there are areas of the city that are quieter, you know, like deeper down or or like further away from sort of the main thoroughfares. Um, but Ut- Utica patrols are a thing, and so are um, uh, like the cleaning crews right because there's always like one or two people within eye shot of pretty much anywhere in the city uh making sure to disinfect hallways or uh you know kill mold spores or what have you and is slicing like a very visible very like um uh, conspicuous activity i mean it, it is using a computer in a non-standard way right so like it think of it like if I were opening up a tower at the public library, that would be the kind of conspicuous it would be. You know what I mean? Like, uh, rather than sitting at the keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in which case, what might be a slightly better idea is heading to one of the, um, Probably like the maintenance droid terminals. Okay, so you're gonna go down a couple of floors to like the the droid areas, basically. Yeah, because I have like a bit of an idea of of places in there because yeah, I've you made your way around there. Yeah, and hung out with Mabel and stuff. Of course. Uh, okay, so you make your way down, um, the turbo lift, a couple of floors, and you end up on the the droid like maintenance area section of the the city. Um, it's just as clean down here, but it is a little, like, like the lighting is slightly worse, or there's something that's just, like, the, the quality of the presentation is somewhat lessened somehow. Uh, things are a little older or something. Um, but there are plenty of terminals. Uh, there are also Utica personnel sort of, like, standing in the hallways. As you get off the turbo lift, there's a guy standing on, like, the corner of the, like, three branching pathway that you could take of, of hallways. He gives you kind of, like, a gruff acknowledgement nod you know in his like full Utico jumpsuit um and uh just stands there with the your know, blaster on his hip right let's go and look for an inconspicuous terminal okay Which you mischief uh all right so it's it's not too difficult to find an inconspicuous terminal you just have to walk for a fair distance. So it gets like later into the evening as you make your way into sort of like corridors that are going to be expanded upon later. And there's like a big sign that says like coming soon on like the, you know, holographically on the end of the corridor. Um, but that it just kind of ends. Uh, but there is a terminal down here in this like weird dead end um, that you might be able to access. I would love to. Yeah. Shall we give you a roll to see um, how much I can find? I mean, you're going to have to, yeah, roll your, your tech. Is it techies for slicing? Let me check. I it. believe so. I don't think there's anything um, specific for it. Let me check. Or not techies, but uh, computers. It's, com- it's computer stuff. Computers is the yep. skill for slicing yeah yep. Yep. uh so you can give me a computer's roll but i am once again going to use a dark side point to make it harder uh because that's what i feel like doing so the utico system is uh, insular and difficult to access so roll is slightly more difficult all right Hey, that's a lot of successes anyway. Slightly more difficult for an amateur, perhaps, but not for Omni Brockberg. <laughs> My red came up as a blank, so you lucky, lucky. Um, so you you hack the the terminal, and there's a 
like a non-standard sub menu that you manage to access that uh that leads you to the Utico, you know, schematics and readouts. And there's a lot of like construction stuff for, you know, the, the upcoming expansion projects and so forth. But you can find the schematics you're looking for, the vehicle schematics and the uh, like laser wall and the, you know, whatever el else it is that you're looking for. Just let me know what it is. Yeah, so... I'm I'm kind of uh, wondering at the moment between um, whether we want to try and do it ourselves, whether we want to try and slip this information to the fog wardens, who would definitely be much more able to pull off this plan, but it would take slightly longer. So I'm thinking, I probably just want to go for. None of us are going to sneak. <laughs> We're going to go in there. I'm going to get sweaty hands. I'm going to get them all over the things. <laughs> They're going to see those grease marks on them. It's like, who's Mommy. been here? Get a drop a spanner. And the gods have been like... Okay, but huh? what what is it you're looking for, Dave? Like, Sorry, like... sorry. Um, I'd like to look for... Um, the schematics on the, like we say, the the kind of um, scavenging, the excavation, the cutters, you called them. Sure, um, yeah. You're looking for, like, anything on the vehicle types that they would be using to, like, clear cut or, like, generally, like, move things around or... Yeah, and then... Um, like, some security stuff as well in terms of... Like, here is the laser wall. Here is where the standard kind of um, power supply for those might be in case somebody needed to do maintenance on those or blow them up. Sure. And just sure, some, yeah. like, low-level security stuff as well. I got, I got you, definitely. Um, okay. Yeah, you can get all that, and you can download it to your datapad um, so that you have yeah. it, like, available to you. Um, you notice... You, you, like, deftly avoid uh, tripping a security system that would have caused you a great deal of issue uh, alarm-wise had you accidentally stumbled over it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you put everything back where it needs to be. The the wiring or whatever, the, the, the like, slight deviation that you've made to the terminal, the slight changes you've made to the terminal, uh, redone and removed. Um as if you were never there. Awesome, awesome. Um, just as a as a reminder, what was our line of communications to the fog wardens like? It was we had to go in person, right? Uh, yeah, they they didn't give you a like a comm key because no, such be... such things can be traced, right? So. Absolutely. Okay, I'm happy with that, and I will, I suppose, when we meet up, um, suggest that as an idea uh, okay. tomorrow morning. Okay, sounds great. Um, on your way back through the corridors, like back to Madame Harani's Omni, um, you run into Bosak, the Jawa, um, who gives you like a, like, a sh like a nudge as he like walks by you. And it's just like, psst, hey! What's up? We gotta be making our move pretty soon. Are you guys still want to be involved in that, or? Well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I might have just acquired some scumbags on the Unico things in case there was some group that wandered around the jungle that might want to sabotage them to buy us some more time. All right, that right, sounds good. I'm, I'm bright and early tomorrow morning. Come by my place. Yeah, I'll try to round everybody up. <laughs> okay, thanks. And he, and he just, like, you know, doesn't want to have, like, a long conversation with you in the hallway, so to speak, and just, like, keeps going. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's see. Awesome. So, if there's nothing else over the, the evening... I want to listen to the radio. <laughs> What's the radio like? Who's the... Discord, tell me who the different ones are, and 
I don't know. Is there a classic rock one? I feel like <laughs> on the road by so you get so rock. you get back to your room and you turn the radio, the Utica like radio on and you hear like uh this is Dab Arnold with uh late night Utica radio, uh easy listening tunes. Uh you can find you know, you find our offices in the third district of you know, of the Utica of Utica's lovely vote city and then now uh, some Langley Galway to ease you off to sleep. It's and let me get a Langley Galway song because I have them. Uh, <laughs> what is Langley singing? I need a good. I need a good. I'd, I'd say I'm sorry. But I need I'm a not. good slow sad one. Perfect. Yeah, this is if frogs could cry. And then there's a you know like a <laughs> slow sad ballad about frog. Frog crying. Only frogs could cry. Only frogs could cry. There are like weird, weird frogs here as well, aren't there? On Vogue. Yeah. What yeah. are they called again? The slime slippers? Yeah. Slime slippers. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. So it's... <laughs> okay. I think I'm done now. I'm <laughs> yeah, okay. Something okay. Else. <laughs> look, look. Look, whatever you got for me, Dave, I can handle it. Okay. It's, it's fine. It's just because. Like super honestly, I just get super into the world. Yeah, no. Like I, everybody's I, I, done so much work on the stuff. I'm just like, I know, I know that your enthusiasm is is noted. You know, and, and the, Sick as hell. I and those on the Discord for building things are uh, very very appreciative of yeah. your inquiries. Um, I didn't have a radio jock ready though, so I I had to. That was Maybe I'll you caught that. you caught me on that one. Um. So, uh, yeah, the night passes sort of as nights do uneventfully. And, uh, Zyle, when you get up in the morning, uh, you, when you come down from, like, your room in Madame Harani's, uh, Squeaker calls you over to the table, uh, that, that he's sitting at. He doesn't appear to have moved. Squeaker's just been conducting business all night, you know, as, as droids can do. Um, and he says... Well, hey, Squeaker. And he waves you over and says, Ah, you again. Wonderful. I have your speeder on the landing bay. Oh, really? Brought in just in the early hours of this morning. Excellent. Uh, do I claim the keys here or do I head down to the landing, landing pad and grab them there? Head down and one of my associates will... Give you the keys to the vehicle. Awesome. Thanks again, Squeaker. You paid. I provide. That's gonna go check out their speeder. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could you could wait for the others or you can go check it out yourself, I guess, you know. I, I should remind you, Zyle is nineteen. I mean sure. The moment I they're like I can't imagine Zyle waiting. There's no right, way. Right, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. just like in your sort of like in your sort of like six or seven o'clock in the morning equivalent, Zyle hops on down to the speeder bay. Um and there is in fact a, a Gamorrean waiting for you uh in the in the bay with the red fog raiders like, you know, like armor on. Um and uh he's standing in front of your your car. Um, which if you want to detail it, you may, uh, otherwise you can leave it up to me and I'll come up with something, but I want to um, give you the, I wanna give I you mean, the option because all land speeders are basically created equal to begin with. Yeah. They all, they all look more or less the same. I would say that instead of, you know, the, the sandy kind of brownish yellow that you'd see on someplace like Tatooine, uh, this is a bit more, uh, a bit more stylized to kind of, uh, uh, fit the Vodian sort of aesthetic. Um, it's got uh, a bit more color to it. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more fun and funky. Um, but generally, yeah, it's it's is fairly it, standard. Is it closed topped? Is it open topped? It's a four C. Oh, it's definitely convertible. Okay, all right, yeah, got you. Yeah, definitely. like so, I can I can I can put the top down if I need to, but like. <laughs> It's a uh, it's closed for so you know so you don't want bugs flying into you while you're trying to race but uh for you know casual jaunts on really nice days you can pop the top back. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's probably maybe like three generations, maybe four generations of Landspeeder old, you know, like it's it's 
You got it for 2,000 credits, which I is mean, a hell of a bargain. It's, it's a used car, uh, and it's, it's going to get me from point A to point B, and that's all that matters. It's not exactly a beater. It's more like a beater that somebody loved a lot, you know, and, like, worked on and, and kept maintained for for some time past its due-by date, so to nice speak. Nice and steeped up. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. not bad. Um, Did you find a profile need to come, for it? Need to come up with a name for you. Yeah, I have a I have a Provost stat profile for it. Um, yeah, I, I remember we were looking at the expanded stuff, weren't we? Because there's not yeah, so, really any passenger. So ones the one I'm thinking about is in Force and Destiny. So let me just grab the book. I think I found the one as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come up with a name for you, sweetie. You're a real beaut. <laughs> Let's check my my force and destiny reference here for the stat line on your wonderful speeder. I love my lady. The um, the, the Gamorrean like snorts as you sort of approach and and hands you some keys. He's clearly not a common speaking Gamorrean. He's got like the says a couple of like squealy snorty kind of like in Gamorrean words to you, but I don't know if you speak it or not. Um, uh, I don't know if I speak it or not either. Um, as a but chiss, I, I would it's very highly likely that, that I, don't. I highly doubt it. Yeah, I, I very likely don't. But I think that uh, when they see the speeder, they do that thing that some people do when they get like some, a brand new vehicle and kind of drape themselves over the hood of it, and kind of like. <laughs> like yes. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, Two hundred and fifty-six here. Yeah, yeah, we're close. Sorry, I'm just looking for your stats. Stats for this wonderful... Okay, so it is a passenger land speeder, as per the rules in Force and Destiny. And I will add this card to the to the setup on our next GM prep. I didn't think to do it this time around. Okay. Um, but it, it has a silhouette 2, speed 2, handling plus 0. It has a uh, HD threshold of 4, SS threshold of 5, 0 armor. Uh, it has an encumbrance capacity of 10. Uh, and it has four customization hard, hard points. It has one pilot as the crew, and then a four passenger capacity. So it's like a four seater, basically. It's uh, it's our our happy little family car, and I'm um, very excited to have it. Basically, yeah, yeah. It's as it's it's as like it's as car as Star Wars comes. You know what I mean? Like it's as close to it uh, without it, without it actually being a car. Yeah, second like four-door hatchback. Congrats on your RAV4, says chat. Yeah, yeah exactly. No! But yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah. The, once uh, once he's handed over the keys, the gam the Red Fog Raider Gamorrean just, like, le leaves you to it. It's like, this is yours now, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't have to guard it anymore, <laughs> basically. He just, like, walks away. We'll I was going to, you know, you know, give it a feel, kick the tires, you know, that kind of idea is sort of... Get in the driver's the passenger seat and driver's seat and kind of you know look at the controls, kind of familiarize themselves in like a yeah. A there's yeah. there's a nice smell of like you know cleaned like ca cleaned car smell. You know like someone's been over it with a, a vacuum and a you know Not like an air freshener, smell, but a clean um, car smell. Yeah, it's a, like a little bit of that like leather yeah. and leather and plastic kind of a smell. Um, I think it's at this point that Zyle goes ah. Oh, I should have waited for the rest of them. <laughs> I I have a, another question for Zyle. Um, are you the sort of excited teenager for their card that you've already bought yourself something to hang off the rear view mirror? Um, I think that <laughs> probably not only because at this point, Zyle still the mentality of like I shouldn't accumulate a lot of stuff. That's fair. I'm... Yeah. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so what are the other two of you doing while Zyle is like headed down to the garage and you know like mooning over their car, getting up in the morning and re I probably reorganizing? Probably Zyle on the way, right? If I'm coming out of my ship. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you, yeah. You probably you probably mean on Zyle on the way back, Omni. Yeah, and pick them up. Be like, oh, it's looking pretty good. Oh yeah, this is this is our new um our new speeder. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what to name it though. I have no idea. Can't can't figure out the name yet. 
I think once I've, I've had the chance to kind of drive around a little bit, uh, maybe her name will kind of speak to me. All right. Wait, well, do mean... you not, do you not name your, have you not named oh, no, your ship? absolutely. I just, I'm just unsure as to why you think you're the only one that gets in to say what the name is. Omni, no, that's, Omni that's, has, that's Omni has I mean, indeed so. memorized the serial number of the ship that they stole, but I don't know about romantic. Yeah, movement. it's, it's like a, but it's in like a in a friendly way. It's yeah. like we both love these kinds. Of <laughs> yeah, things. of course. It's yeah. like I want to be excited about your thing too. Um, I mean, I, I I'm sorry to have assumed. Um, I, no, I just I, figured. I'm um, kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, um, have you uh, had any thoughts about upgrades yet? I was reading. I haven't even. Uh, I haven't even had the chance to drive it. I don't know what it needs yet. I mean, until I've 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 I've, I've given it a spin. Hey, that's fair. I'll write up a list for you anyway. Um, okay. Cool. I mean, off, off, off the top, it, it looks pretty good. Whoever owned it before us took really good care of it and uh, obviously uh, loved loved their speeder very much. Probably going to want to scrub off the gag emblem, though. That's, you know, repaint it a little bit. Ah, yes. A mod job. Sure. Uh, I'm just excited to have it. I I hadn't even thought that far ahead. I mean, and Omni, you would you would also realize, of course, that this is the kind of thing that, like, yeah, it's a car, but it also has four customizable possible hard points. You know, like, this is the kind of thing you could, you yeah, could turn like... in to more than a car in terms of its capability. It's like, why does this Jeep have, uh, like, a mount for a machine gun? <laughs> yeah. Well, then it's a technical. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this a Hilux? Shit. <laughs> nice. In any case, we probably should go and um, find uh, Mabel and uh, see if we can't figure out if um, if uh, Kino's, Kino's come back. Oh. I, I don't suppose you saw him. No, I wasn't at Madame Harati's really last night anyway. I was doing yeah. some uh, covert things. He wasn't <laughs> down when I covert. when I came when I came down. Yeah, we'll see. Uh Mabel's meant to meet us and then uh uh Bozuk is ready for us to get on the way. On the way to All right. Crash. Yes, yes, that. Oh, fantastic. I keep, well, I don't keep forgetting. I just, I've started to lose track of my days a little bit. Can't remember when we're supposed to be doing what anymore. We've, no, we've kind we've of picked up a, a calendar with one date on it and it's speed race and all the rest is blank. I understand. I mean, you're not wrong to say. Anyways, let's go find Mabel. So I assume you're going to park the, the speeder up somewhere. Um yeah. Are you leaving it in the like the the bay where all the rest of them are? Or... Well, is there like a designated spot where yeah, we could put there, it? Yeah, there is like a park, Road City parking, quote unquote, that you can yeah. that you can leave it in. But sure. when you go and like put it there, you also notice that there are like a couple of people like working on their their vehicles or what have you. There's getting like, them one, ready. Yeah, one or two groups of like various humanoids working on things, and there's one vehicle that looks like it is just like an orb. It's just like a metal orb that this like insectoid race person is like working on like the repulsors on, but you can hardly even tell where they are. Um, they very cool. Mm -hmm. I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess at the very least, just for appearances' sake, we have to make it look like we're working on it for the race. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you have ideas. Have at it. I mean, the speed of it belongs to all of us. It's not like I can tell you no. You can't do anything to it. I mean, we just pop over the hood and prop it up slightly as if we're going to come back to it later. I could just shove a wrench somewhere. Um, I've got spurs. I guess that works. <laughs> so you like you like get out. You prop open the hood. And then, like, you set down... Omni, like, sets down a pair of leather gloves on, like, the side of it with, like, a wrench on top of them. And then just, like, you both just walk away. 
Keeping up appearances. It's important. Okay. All right. I like it. Yeah. Keeping up appearances. And you make your way You make your way to Madame Harani, so you can obviously meet up with Mabel. Uh, Mabel, have you been doing anything this morning while these two have been, you know, like, uh, talking and speeder finding? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that Mabel would get up to, but I think she was probably busy all through the night, like making the rounds. Yeah. You were doing a lot of talking, right? Like, and so she's know, just like getting one. back to, Oh yeah. Like I show up of, around the same time that they do kind of a thing. Yeah. You're yeah. kind of just on your way back. Yeah. Well, like you need sleep. So yeah, it's nice. Wish I was a robot. <laughs> if only. Um, so yeah, you, you make your way, the three of you back to Madame Harani's and, uh, find yourself a table and sit down all comfy. Like, uh, in the corner, um, the Wookiee, the like white white furred Wookiee that I've I've characterized several times uh mm-hmm. when we've been here, is being like not yelled at, but you can tell they're having a heated discussion with some like Utico uniformed individual uh at their table. Um the like the the, the Wookiee is still sitting, but the Utico guy is like standing kind of like aggressively, like talking down to them. If you know what I mean, and you can't hear the details, but there's there's like a discussion happening that is in some way heated, and then the Utico guy like huffs and walks away, kind of. Yeah, I imagine Mabel is a little bit like surprised that anyone would risk behaving that way towards <laughs> a massive, you know, rip your arms off. I mean, this Wookie lady, she looks like she's got some years on her too. You know, she's she's got like a little bit of the gray and the white fur. Mm-hmm. You know, she she probably doesn't put up with a lot of shit. But you know, there's certain people that you gotta you gotta toe the line with. Um, but yeah, it, it ends as quickly as you like sort of see it start because you come in, and you see it happening. It's over. Um, you find yourself a table. And, yeah, uh, kind of the usual yeah, booth so or like, whatever that we sit in. Yeah, settle down in your usual spot um, and discuss. And and discuss. Come on in, Mabel. Well, Sita came in. Mm. Yes, well, I suppose everything is ready then. I mean, I suppose so. We have to do some modifications on her at some point. But, um, yeah, she's here. She's ready to go. And... Uh, I guess Omni's got the other update. Yep, Bozak's ready for us, and uh, we should get going as soon as possible. Now, I wanted to put it to you that we could try out the new speeder and try and make our way over to our mutual cohorts and hand over some uh, interesting data that I acquired so as to make sure we're ahead of the competition looking around when we get there. Yes, well, I didn't have any luck recruiting any droids to our cause, so we're on our own, I'm afraid. Well, that's uh, unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. Everyone's just busy returning to a working life, I suppose. Sometimes that can make all the difference to some people. But I understand it's not helpful for this situation. So, again, I'm sorry. No, I'm afraid not. But, yes, perhaps... Our acquaintances can help us here. And Elf is going to. Gonna... S- sorry. Sorry, Aki. I didn't mean to. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Elf, they have to like travel quite a ways to get to this wreck, right? Or, like, to get to the Thunder? Well. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's far. Uh, and the, the difference is also that, like, Utico seems to be kind of like trying to make a path to it so that they can, like, get back and forth. So it's like a little bit longer of a process than just, like, going there. Yeah, so there are going to be plenty of opportunity for, like, guerrilla skirmishing. And, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think we should aim to maybe try and hit up our friends on the way back as opposed to on the way there, because there's something, something I think, um, let's just say 
Uh, we could kill two birds with one stone if we if we uh, try to rendezvous with them after we've been out there. Hmm. All right. If you think the time scale will work, um, do you have sure. do you have like a reason why we should hit them up first? It's a time sensitive operation. The sooner they get the information, the sooner they can start making their preparations. Fair enough. We could always do both. Hit them on the way there. Hit them on the way back. Yeah, if you need to see them a second time. We might need to, depending on what we find on that wreckage. Right. Well, we'll see Mozak on the way out. Uh, mention the plan. Try and work out a route, since I still have the data. Plan that out. Uh, get underway. I suppose you could have your test drive as well, which I'm sure you're very excited for. I am incredibly excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I haven't had the chance to drive anything in quite some time. Okay, so is the is that the gang headed to go see Bowiesock then? I imagine. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So you you make your way out into the hallway and you go down the the various market stalls to where Bowie Socks is uh, is near the exit, um, and he and he sort of sees you coming, Omni, and goes like, you know, like kind of beckons you all in close, uh, and says, "We're gonna be heading out in the next hour with uh, many of my guys as I can get on a couple speeders." Uh, bring in as much gear as we can to take as much as we can before the Utica goons get there. Uh, we're looking for valuable stuff, you know? Like, stripping the plating of this thing would be a bigger task than I got guys for, but raiding a whole barracks full of E-11s or Stormtrooper uh, pl plasteel armor, you know, that kind of stuff, that'd be worth it old Imperial data if we could slice any terminals. Uh, assuming it's got power. Do you uh, yes, have any and... spare pack? Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> well, I think uh, Mabel's inclined to ask the same question. She says, yes, and speaking of which, uh, I'll be needing as many uh, droid chargers as you can provide me with. For the, like, and he's like, for the job or like eh, that I can get from the place? for the job okay uh he because like, mabel's <laughs> plan is to uh reactivate all of the, <laughs> the, droids, the droids that are like there the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he he grabs a uh like a data pad and makes a couple of like changes on it and then like pings a comm link like he does like a little like morse code beep on the comm link more than like actually talking into it um and then and then sets some away and says like we'll have as many as we can get uh, yeah, and Elf, if if this is something that I would need to like give them credits for or whatever, like I'm happy to. We'll figure say out that we've we'll made arrangements out, in we advance. We will figure out the con. This is like one of those. This is a plot thing I want to happen, which I'm I'm game to just say yes to, you, and then we figure out the consequences as things move forward. You know what I mean? Like. The, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So. Um, I mentioned the kind of idea that we we have a speeder now as well. We'll join them soon after doing something that's going to help. I don't want to make Bosuk both implicit and also know that we're. He slides tight you. With the he slides you a a uh, a data chip Omni that has like a plug-in coordinates for like where you're going, um, hmm. so that it's like we, you you can meet us you, like as soon as you can, but we're we're gonna get there as fast as possible and start working. All right. Well. Good luck and happy hunting. <laughs> you know, hope we can get a few gems before they come to strip the remains. We'll be right behind you. <laughs> All right, wonderful. And he like he like folds the the sign down on his shop and like starts scooping things away so that he can like he can get about it. It's clear he's going personally as well. You know, like this guy's this guy's head of his crew sort of thing. He's gonna do it personally. Um, we don't and... need anything to chance. And yeah, so you make your way to your speeder, and I assume you're headed to the the Fog Wardens, right? Yes, we'll go mm. there first. 
Okay. Um, so this might be the first time that we get to roll a certain skill. <laughs> a piloting planetary. Yay! Skill roll from Zyle. This should what? go well. What are your dice looking like? It's a yellow and a green. Yeah, you could use a light uh, side to upgrade that green into a yellow. I would yeah, like I'm, that very much. I'm at two two, so I can probably give you the train, the, like the skill rank, so you can upgrade that, or uh, a boost die, or like whatever. I'll add a boost die for assistance. Um, okay, yeah, whatever's for, easier. For co-piloting, it's easier that way. We'll use one of the light side points to upgrade. Okay, so back yeah. to back to two dark side, one light side, um, and. Uh, Whenever you're ready, Sal. <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, two Very failures. Nervous. Two failures. Are you and serious? A, two How failures and a series of advantages. So this doesn't mean that you crash or anything like that. It's just a little slower going. The Vodian jungle is like thick and can be problematic for certain, you know, uh, traversal. Uh, even for a hover vehicle, it still gets uh, gets in the way a little. Um, the weird homebrew mods as well, probably messing with Zyle. <laughs> yeah, know. yeah. Like, like yeah. where where's the bleed blob bloop? And like, <laughs> oh, they replaced it with a G seventeen twenty bloop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're you're dealing with the the ups and downs of a new car, um, but you you get there. It's just it takes you maybe like a like a like a an extra hour basically to do it. Um, what's nice Kyle is the, just kind of what's, cursing to themselves the whole time. What's nice is the enclosed cabin means that you don't have to use rebreathers until you get out. Um, so you know you you save on oxygen uh, on your way there. Um, eventually, you're flagged down by like a um, like a brightly colored cloak being like waved. You know, like you can see like movement of somebody, uh, sort of like signaling you in. Um, yeah, does I know the secret handshake? Lyle I mean, is trying to commune with the planet as they grow more and more frustrated with this car. If they're just like, listen to the planet, the planet is speaking to you. Listen to the planet. <laughs> the planet. The planet says stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, there's the planet. <laughs> um. So you you uh you bring the the hover the hover vehicle to a stop, uh and. Uh, one of the wardens who you recognize, like you recognize their armor pattern because they all have like these unique patterns that are like similar to the mushroom groves of the planet. And it's this, you know, stormtrooper armor painted in weird ways, like mushroom decoration on the helmets and the, the these like cloaks with patterns on them. Um, you recognize him from the, the, the camp and he sort of like looks to the three of you as if expecting you to like say something, you know, explain why you're here. I come bearing gifts. Oh? You're aware that Utico's planning to uh, go and scavenge the crashed Star Destroyer, but you not? The Sunderer, yes, I'd heard. I figured if, it, well, that presents a good opportunity for some sabotage, I assume. I'd be moving, they're not in their installation anymore. And I thought you could use these. You hand him like a data pad or something. Yep. He takes the data pad and he like looks through it and he goes, "Hmm, could be useful." I assume the plan is slow them down as much as possible. We'd like to get there first. Better hurry. I'll see that these get into the right hands. And he just like nice. goes, you know, like he's got a mission. Yeah, he's just like a he's got a mission. Stole trooper, just like yeah, yep. he's got a mission to complete. Right. He goes, he goes ahead with it, um, and sort of leaves you to 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 assume that they they will get done what needs to get done, um, and uh, you have the coordinates of the Sunderer, and you make your way. Um, it is a long drive. It's like a couple hours at like the fastest possible you know, that you can go in the jungle at least. We're talking like three or four hours at least. Um, and... Uh, I need to stop to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, probably, yeah. At uh, least once. Um, and so you make your way uh, through the jungle. 
uh, the f- flora and fauna of this place, like in general, sort of changes in these like small mushroomy biomes. You know, like there are there's a place where it's like there are a lot of slime slipper frogs and you see them everywhere. And then there's a place where there are a bunch of those leech blooms and you got to drive carefully. And then there's a place where, you know, the the mushrooms are like these huge, tall redwood looking things, you know, like they're they're these like small. We're in a little domed vehicle driving through. It's like Pokemon Snap. (laughs) <laughs> like going through to give patience of the wildlife. <laughs> um, Sorry, I've been playing it. <laughs> I haven't tried the new one yet, but uh, so eventually you come to like where the coordinates should be, just right ahead of you, and you can see that there is sort of a mound of dirt, like dirt and moss, and like like a hill almost, as if the star destroyer that should be there has been covered in its entirety. By by like the the overgrowth, and the only thing you can see and like looking uh, specifically is like the top corner of what could be the bridge of this like big triangular vehicle. You can see sort of like the metallic dirt steel poking through the sort of very zenith of this hill. Um, but otherwise, it, it is like very it's it's big, like bigger than you would expect i mean it's a capital ship right uh buried in this like mound um and you can see that there are some like overhanging parts where it gets dark like at the bottom of the at the bottom of the the mound and there's like moss hanging over as if there's like something under it you know like these kinds of details start coming into view um and there's sort of a clearing around it almost in terms of like the 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 tree like fungal growths have not been able to like find a root around here and it's this mossy green sort of covering on everything what kind of vibe is uh xyle getting from this place in general so how much interaction with the empire has xyle had um i mean the fog wardens are basically the first i think exposure they've really ever had so this, um, this, I think, I think it's more their curiosity of like how the environment seems to respond differently to the presence of of this than more than anything else. Yeah. And given their conversations with, um, what's her face. Yeah, it, it's clear that like the the earth, the you know the forest, the jungle has tried to take this place back in its way as it as it does with things it considers to be foreign. You know, uh, it has been reclaiming the Star Destroyer. It's climbed over this entire thing. But not in, like, the virulent way that you would, ex- like, expect. The sort of absolute, you know, engulfing of the thing. Um, as if something is sort of holding it back. There's a sense of, like, unease, almost, to, to like, to the area. As if something is, like, slightly wrong, but you can't tell what it is that that is like twigging this like sixth sense in your brain you know it's that it's that tingling on the back of your neck danger sense uh that something is a a, that is a miss but that there's no there's nothing you can see that would that would count as danger weird feeling you can see up ahead of you in this clearing uh like near the base of the mound uh, that uh, there are like three or four speeders with various attachments. One of them like a big crane arm. One of them, you know, like a buzz saw attached to like a, a swivel. Uh, one of them with like a laser, like a powerful like laser cutter that they're trying to like use on a section of the ship. You hear the like, you hear the the beam the beam noise from a distance. The like kind of like drilling sound of this this red uh laser cutting beam attached to one of the vehicles um that like pulls your attention to the them in like this they're very small compared to this very large thing in front of them um and uh it's it's probably bosox crew right who've gotten here before you because they came direct All right should i hate him to think it was going to be this big. I mean, I had no idea what to expect. 
I guess the only one he would have known for sure would be Mabel. Yeah, and she like tilts her head a bit and is like, you can tell that she's kind of pondering or like calculating a little bit. And then she says, uh, it looks to be about 70% of it. Yeah, Maybe a little more. There's like, clearly some of it missing for somebody yeah. who knows the the exact dimensions of the Star Destroyer, right? Like, this isn't um, even the whole thing. No. And she's like, Mabel is super casual and is just like yeah. walking forward, like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah to, to anyone who's not been up close to a, like a capital ship before, there's a certain degree of like majesty to the sheer size of a thing that is basically a like a navy battleship, but like on a even grander scale. Um, uh, but Mabel, of course, is like programmed not to care, you know? Yeah. Like, and like, I can't get that tingle up my no, spine that no. Zyle is experiencing. So for Mabel, everything is super perfunct and she's just like, okay, yeah, here it is. It's and like, she'll like walk over. It's like working. Okay. So you, you walk, you walk up to, uh, Bowsock and you can see his crew and his crew is all Jawas. They're all Jawas. Like the, with the exception of like two humans who are like helping them operate one of the like machines. It's they're talking to each other in in uh, Jawaese, uh, like uh, directing sort of this like salvage little salvage operation they've got going, and it looks like they've cut they've like laser cut a hole in the hull uh, to like gain entry, um, because the 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 door clearly not visible under the sort of rubble, uh, and once you get closer to the to the destroyer enough that you're like. You can see some of it under the moss. You can tell the whole thing is at like a 45 degree angle uh, sort of lodged in the dirt, right? Um, so the inside is is going to be a little windy uh, in ways that are like not design uh, thought through because it's at a weird angle and there's no artificial gravity. Um so they've just they've just finished cutting a hole in it, and Bosak hears you like coming up, Mabel. Hears your like your metal footsteps on the 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 ground behind him. Uh, turns around and says, "Ah, wonderful! You're here. We're just making our first breach. Uh, gonna be sending some some folks in soon. Check around, you know, the the nearby area, and then uh, see where we're at. Uh, not sure exactly what section we're in. Uh, we got." A lot of destroyer to cover. Yeesh. Yeah, and Mabel kind of nods. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, we could... You're welcome to go first if you want. I'm... We should be able to cross-reference the information in Mabel's databanks with whatever we find with a preliminary scan and try and hopefully find that out. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go in as soon as possible. Look how helpful we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 great, great. Uh, as, you know, as soon as you're ready, you you go ahead. Uh, oh, here, and he hands you like some some sort of like flashlight stab lights to like put on, you know, rifles or wherever you want to mount it, like on your helmet or shoulder or whatever. Um, so so that you, you'd be able to see you while you're in there. It's gonna be dark. Yeah, I suppose it would be. There's, there's a ja Jawa near the near the the like breach, uh, pushes some of the like metal aside once the cutter like finishes cutting around it and like it falls in with a clunk and this Jawa like raises their welding mask, turns back around to you and gives you like a thumbs up and that's where we'll take our break. Um, we'll take our oh, we'll take boy. a break. We'll take a break here and we'll come back with some Star Destroyer exploring. Yay! Oh, Don't go anywhere, boy. anyone. Be right back. We're back. Our team was just about to enter the ruins of the, this, the Sunderer. Victory class Imperial Star Destroyer crashed here on Vode uh, some time ago by apparently the mutiny of our, <laughs> our dear friends, the Fog Wardens. Uh, so the Jawa with the welding mask uh flop like flopped up uh gives you the thumbs up uh and uh and sort of like waves you past you know with a couple of words in Jawaese but it's clear like you know he doesn't speak common this this Jawa That's okay. I speak Jawa. Oh, you speak Jawa? Well, he's basically just saying like go ahead, we'll go in second and take the other route. 
Yeah, and I'll just say something like, thanks for your hard work. We'll... He seems and like then there's like a good luck thing in Jawa. He seems like super stoked that you that you like speak Jawaese, you know, like that that's yeah. like not a common thing outside of Tatooine, right? No, I I f- figured since I have the Utini skill, I that feels like it's relevant. Yeah, I agree. Uh so which which one of you is the first to sort of like peek inside here? I feel like this is Omni's Omni's baby, so Omni can go first. Yep, yeah, got a little dog vision goggles on. Yeah. Peek my head round. So, wait, I wouldn't pick, poke my head round the corner because my eyes are on the side of my head. So I, <laughs> I got my you. head around the corner. <laughs> I got you. I know what you're saying. So you you take a look around, uh, and you can see that they've breached into a hallway that like sort of leads in either direction. Though in one direction it sort of goes uphill, and one it goes sort of down like downhill because of the way that the the star destroyer is like tilted. Um. It's hard to tell, like, where in the ship this is. Everything is very dark. Even the dark vision goggles, they, you know, they give you sort of, like, a a lighter view, but not a colored view of, like, the area. Um, there's a lot of gray Durasteel, though, honestly, tons of the local environment seems to have, like, breached this area. There's a lot of overgrowth on the inside of the destroyer, like mossy, mossy growths and, like, bioluminescent little bulbs in, like, corners and on the on the roof like growing these like weird mushroom uh like stems uh there's all kind like all kinds of growth basically it looks like a cave more than a tunnel in a spaceship yeah it, it feels a lot like kind of uh an art installation in a way like showing the juxtaposition which i just think is really cool yeah, I mean it's this it's this whole like nature overgrowing technology, mm. nature overgrowing civilization kind of a vibe, yeah, for sure. Uh all right. As much as it pains me to say so, I think we probably want to head uphill. I mean, everything below uh below here has probably been consumed and is no longer of any use trying to get down into the sub the sub yeah. uh, uh, surface layers might ha- take a little bit more effort than we are currently yeah. equipped to handle. A pair of Jawas, a pair of Jawas, like muscles past you and heads in the downward direction, hearing you like talking about the upward. They they have like little flashlights and they're clearly like eager to get get down there and like look around, find signs. I now want to see Jawa commandos, <laughs> reach and clear style like SWAT Jawas. <laughs> yeah. So cute. I mean, they're they're not quite that well trained, but they're clearly like seasoned scavengers. You know, they they're looking for the things that they can like take out of here with any value. All right, up we go. Okay, yep. so heading down the darkened corridor, you hear your you can hear your feet e- like the footsteps echoing in the the darkness. Even though there's this like mossy covering, there's that sound of like a heavy foot on a metal surface through the moss. Um. And uh, all of you have flashlights or, like, some way to see. Um, so it isn't too bad that it's, like, dark and, and terrible in here. Occasionally you see movement uh, out of the corner of your eye or, like, down a hallway as you, like, approach the corner or what have you. Um, that looks like, like animal movement, you know, like, like a creature or, like, something that lives here. You know, you're disturbing an environment that hasn't been disturbed in a long time. Uh, seeing as you like the Jawas cut their way through the hull, um, and uh, yeah. Dial swings their flashlight up kind of overhead a lot to make sure that yeah. none of those you're looking for little... the lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. The um, oh, good show. The air when when you swing your flashlight through the air, the air is thick with like musty spores. You know, you can kind of like that like very um dry but somehow damp uh like air of like full of f- fungoid uh, uh like yeah like sporing or like offshoots um there's oh. like it, and and you find you find very quickly while you're walking through the corridors that there are a bunch of blast doors that are sealed as if like they were to prevent explosive decompression or you know parts of the ship have been damaged and like the automated systems have closed closed off sections and like any of that kind of stuff there's there's a lot of like security doors and you'd see them at omni as like security doors and maybe you would know 
you know what a, a star destroyer regular door looks like versus a blast door um yeah it's probably using the scanner i'm starting to like make a little bit of a map um that i'll try and get back to yeah. the jawas so i'll be marking off like where sealed and are you like calm linking with with bosak as you like go through or are you guys like talking we probably got like a channel that i could open but it's probably like a, a pushy talk one rather than the whole time yeah that's fair enough um you find yeah, a... i think mabel oh. is working with omni because i've got the data pad out yeah. and i'm like tracking Sim similarly things. to how you did in the ruins just like kind of tracking exactly stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah um so you find a bunch in this first like section you find a bunch of slime slipper dens in like the various side rooms and so forth this particular section has clearly been open to the environment for quite some time there must be a hull breach somewhere that you didn't know about or was like on the roof that was covered in moss or something like that uh and you come you come across it after a little while there's this sort of like hole in the ceiling where the moss is like covering it and sort of like draping inward um where all of this stuff came in uh but this section has clearly been open to the the, the wildlife open to the the wilds of this place um for some time uh one of the room in one of the rooms uh that looks like a sort of like a gathering assembly area or what have you you come across one of the creatures that you um saw moving through the corridors and like flicking your flashlight up there uh, one of uh, whoever it is you know that peeks in there flicking your flashlight up you see like a big lizard um like a like sort of komodo dragon sized the lizard that like hisses at you angrily when you like flick the light in its face um oh sorry <laughs> just like step back yeah um and uh and it settles back down onto what must be like its nest or its like home uh when you back up like it's just kind of like defending its stuff um you don't see anything like of particular value in there and in fact this first section is like very very musty very open very like rot rotting almost you know like the durasteel is is even being eaten away by the plants um but you'll probably need to get through a sealed blast door to get into the next section Oh, uh, Mabel, by the way, you were given, uh, by, by Usok back at the entrance, he gave you, like, three or four droid chargers, uh, mm -hmm. that you'd be able to carry. Um, yeah, yeah, she's just got them in, like, a satchel over her shoulder or something. Yeah. Well, um, doesn't look like we can progress any further until we get this door open. Um, I don't suppose any of you have, uh, any bright ideas? Low power, not going to be able to slice it. Not as easily as that old installation. We could call for an arc welder. I thought that they had a few. Well, it's either they to blow it up. Alas, I couldn't get my hands on explosives quickly <laughs> enough. Well, that's a shame. If there was any ever a place that uh, being able to blow up a door might be a good I good thing, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, let's see if we can get somebody up here to help us. <laughs> Just say a couple of things in Jowies over the calm. Yeah, calling for as me. my attempt. I'm you, sorry. No, it's if good. Anybody it's actually great. Is it. I love it. Um, so you, if you're just gonna wait for like an ally to come and help. It takes Does about, it look like it's some, something we could, you know, maybe pry apart with our hands? You or? might you might be able to with, like, a pry bar or, um, you know, you could find a way to, like, power it up and, like, open it. Um, but if you're waiting for an ally, that's equally valid, you know. Um, and eventually, you know, spending sort of, like, a an hour or something, like, waiting, uh, a Jawa does, well, like... If it starts being that long... We gotta start. We gotta start making some moves. Okay, all right. Little... Times of the essence. Um, we did manage a pry bar open a stone door. Yep. So like, I hand it over to Mabel and be like, oh, "You're muted." Sorry. Yeah, Mabel can can flex it open probably. Yeah, She's give it. Pretty you can, strong. Give it you definitely, you can definitely give it a try. Um, I'd like to lend a boost die to of assist. 
course, boost I added. Um, what am I what am I rolling here, Elf, to do this? Is it just athletics or? I think it's athletics. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Okay. Hey, you manage it. So you you pro you manage to get your get your metallic fingers on like a good join, so to speak, mm. and and just like with this like creaking horrible metal on metal opening yeah. sound you managed to get it open enough that like a person could stand like step through it basically um you have to check your uh, shoulder actually as often <laughs> yeah okay. and mabel like she can't quite make a smug face but you get kind of get the impression nonetheless that she's just like yeah i'm a badass i'm strong whatever you it's can cool. see into the next section that there are lights flickering in the corridor as if there's like some emergency power or some power conduit that's still like firing um they're all like and they they flicker on and off as as you sort of like move through um there's a Perfect. lot there's a lot less overgrowth in this section it's very much more like the star destroyer like original though crashed obviously everything is sort of at a diagonal angle so you're kind of walking in this like a weird tilted corridor um and uh everybody make a uh i have a check for this let me check what it would be a spooky empire check a spooky empire check everybody make an athletics check for me Loud. or vigilance athletics or vigilance is acceptable Is the pool set up? Uh, yeah. Okay, it looks like Xyle is our only no success role, unfortunately. Um, oh, I'm not showing the rolls. Here we you go. You know, nothing new for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, all that happens is, like, the artificial gravity seems to kick on at, like, random intervals in this hallway as if, like, some of it is working and some of it isn't. And it takes quite a lot of like athletic, you know, like uh, reinforcement or just like knowing when it'll happen um, to, to uh, hold together um, on it. Uh, you're going to take two strain Xyle for, uh, you know, slamming to the ground unexpectedly, you know, at a weird MC Escher style angle. Okay. Um, I'll use my advantages to clear at least one of them. Yeah, no worries. I, will, I think the only reason Omni's able to do this is because the ship that they grew up on, they have absolutely broken the <laughs> yeah. gravity before. That's fair, yeah. <laughs> Broke it themselves. Eventually, eventually, you all find your way through these like slightly lit corridors to what looks like a hangar bay. Um, again, everything is sort of tilted to a, a weird sort of MC Escher style angle. Uh, and a bunch of, like, TIE fighters are smashed up in a corner as if, like, the thing fell over, you know. And and, and uh, there's a Lambda shuttle on the other side that's, like, again, sort of, like, pushed up against the wall. Um, the hangar opening is completely, like, like dirt. Dirt is over the whole thing. Except that there seems to be, like, a tunnel almost, like, dug in it as if something large has, like, come through here. Um and you can even see that there are uh like wrecked up ATSTs like the the chicken walkers like fallen over some land speeders like this place is full of usable stuff you know um that has been like broken by the weird crash angle and the like impact and so forth uh and Physically this, painful to this, see so many cool artifacts that I can play with, and I'm not allowed. To. This um, this hangar room is covered in in overgrowth as well, as if wherever that tunnel leads probably leads back to the surface. There's a lot of like moss coming out from near the hangar area, and like a lot of the wrecks are covered in uh, bioluminescent mushrooms and and uh, like uh, sporing fungi, um, including like basically the entirety of some of the ATST wrecks. Uh, that kind of stuff. It's a little bit unfortunate that we don't have explosives because I'm thinking about what Utica could do with some of this stuff and it kind of makes my skin crawl. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Anything we have to leave behind becomes a resource for them. 
anybody want to take a closer look at any of it or you yeah know, i think uh it? zyle definitely wants to like do some in investigation sure. in here is there anything in particular of the stuff i mentioned that you're like interested in I mean, they're they're definitely interested in like the land speeders, but it, they are also just in general interested in in the the ship because they know there's something here that might be useful. Sure. Um, yeah. So they're kind of you know turn of you're gonna over make every you're gonna make a kind of make a general assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I need you to make a perception check for me, please. Because yeah. if we can take anything off these. Cool speeders and put it on our speeder. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that seems like. Um... Unfortunate. However, uh, digging through the wreckages, the speeder, the speeders I mentioned are like the scout speeder bikes that you see in like Return of the Jedi, that kind of stuff. Um, they're they they have mounted weaponry, uh, and there are a couple of sidearms, you know, like in holsters or whatever on on them that you could grab like uh small like scout pistols um there's uh the tie fighters are so wrecked up that there's not really much you can do with them and that tie fighter is a fragile thing to begin with uh so a crash tie fighter is even worse um there's not a whole lot you can get out of get out of that sort of wreckage um the lambda shuttle however uh looks as if it were trying to get out of there before it like like the 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 whole place went down and it has a bunch of supplies like in the the back once you get the hatch open um a bunch of supplies in the back in in the form of like uh like a few weapons and some like food and resources and some like some patch kits for like various droids so on mabel and in fact there is a droid in the shuttle uh non-functioning um like sitting against the wall it's a protocol droid in like in jet black, basically like yeah. C three PO but black. Yeah, I kind of uh, when we when you mentioned the shuttle, I kind of had a feeling there might be something like this. So, um, yeah, Mabel walks over to this droid that's powered down or whatever, and she like gives it a gives them a quick once over to like see if they are inoperable because they ran out of juice or if they're just like, you know totaled or whatever so on a closer inspection it looks like they were maybe stuck in the shuttle you know like they they, they they couldn't operate the door or it was jammed because of the crash or what have you and they just like ran dry here yeah uh there is a there's a body by the way in the pilot seat uh dressed in uh, imperial grays uh that uh looks like he was trying to get out of here with with this stuff um uh, though the body is entirely decomposed. It's like a skeleton, basically, in a uniform. Spooky. Yeah. Evil skeleton. Yeah, so um, if I may, I think Mabel is going to um, try to power this droid back up using one of these charging packs. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely, you can definitely do so. I mean, you, you, you literally thought of the, the plan and you, you, you have the things. Uh, so you plug the charge pack into like the droids, you know, like, uh, power port or what have you. And there's a couple of seconds of waiting because nothing can run on percent one zero point one percent juice, you know, you yep. gotta have enough to power up. Uh, and, and, uh, after maybe like five minutes, the droid kicks to life. Um, and there's this like flicker of the eyes, like lighting up in this like white light color. Um, and, uh, it says, uh, oh, have I been rescued? Uh, yes, I suppose. Hello. Wonderful. I knew if I waited long enough, someone would come. Yes, well, you've been waiting a very long time, my friend. Uh, uh, oh, how... And he like looks around as if that's like you know the, there's the sound of like servos as he like looks around a little bit. And he, how long have I been out? How many years has it been uh, since the Sunderer crashed? Uh, like eighteen. Yeah, so uh, maybe we'll just say uh, about eighteen years. <laughs> oh, oh, that is some time. Uh, a lot has changed since you uh, were awake. Uh, the Empire 
is gone. And uh, those of us who are left behind, uh, we're doing our best. Hmm? And she like is like reaching around and like getting him out of his uh, like seatbelt or whatever that he was like strapped in on this shuttle. Um, uh, yeah, and so... surreptitiously checking for a restraining bolt while doing so. Uh, I mean, he's an Imperial droid. He has a restraining bolt. That's just like, yeah. the way that it is. Um, like on his, on sort of like his chest, you know, uh, in the, the place that most protocol droids have. Um, and, and he, uh, he like stands up once you like unbuckle him sort of thing. And he says, well, uh, better late than never. Uh, are we leaving then? Unless you feel a particular sentimentality for the ship. Yes. I think it would be best. Very, very well. Uh, uh, good. Yes. Uh, and like heads towards the ramp, you know, like little protocol droid steps. Yeah. And so is he just like being very compliant to me as if I am like yeah, his boss? Yeah, kind of, kind of like he's just like, he seems surprised and a little, you know, like a little nonplussed, you know? All right. Well then maybe, maybe we'll try, try out. She'll just say up. Uh, before all of that, though, I do need to take off your restraining bolt. Uh, uh why? It's a standard procedure here now. Uh, and she, like, indicates herself and, like, shows that she doesn't have one. Very well. Is there a maintenance bay or uh, somewhere I should report to, or? Yeah, um. Yes, about that. And she just, like, reaches into her coat and pulls out, like, a screwdriver to pry it off with. Yeah, okay, you're just gonna, like, cheek, pop it off. Yeah. And there's the, there's the sound of, like, rebooting when you do. You know, the, the droid the droid kind of goes offline for a second and then flicks back on. Um, and, uh, and, like, pauses for a second and then says, Oh, this all looks spectacularly terrible. Like looking around. Mm, yes, quite a disaster. I don't know. It's probably for the best in the long run. Sorry, I'm ruining the mood. Uh, <laughs> it, it, what, what do you mean, best in the long run? No, well, I don't know anything I'm just about the assistant. Yeah, I don't know anything about your empire, but I know that you, um, well, actually, I don't know all that much. I haven't had the chance to talk to Mabel about a lot of it. So were you even bored when this thing crashed? I mean, I'm only 18, so um, I'm as old as this ship has been crashed be on fair, the planet. To be fair, I haven't figured the timeline out 100%. It may be slightly shorter. We're maybe 10 rather than 18, you know. I don't know, I just even, thought it would be kind of funny. Even so, I was very young. And um, I know next to nothing about your empire or your anything else in this particular region of space. As you can see, I'm not local. You, you certainly aren't. I don't have anything in my databanks that would suggest who you mm. are. Nor would you, unfortunately. That's kind of how um, my uh, home works. So, so are we leaving? Uh, we have a bit more exploration to do, um, but um, unless Mabel has like a rendezvous point where she'd like you to wait, we are going to continue on. Like looks to Mabel, like, what am I doing? You know. Uh, well, there's some very friendly Jawas if you go that way. And she, like, indicates the corridor that Jawas. we came from. Oh. Oh. Uh, if I might, Mabel, uh, would you kindly ask our new friend if he has any ship schematics or other data he might want to share? Mm, yes. And uh, we will need your access codes and other uh, security measures, etc. She just, like... You know, lists all the kind of relevant stuff that this droid might have that would be useful. Yeah, I, no, I think it's better if you talk to them. To be honest, I'm not very good. Uh, 
yeah. You're just not very good with talking in general from my experience watching you convince so people to do at, things. As, as I understand it, you have cohorts uh, out that way and I should go with them. Yeah, and Mabel nods. Yes, it's quite all right. Oh, very well then, and, and sort of like you know, it looks like they're gonna just go, sort of thing. Like if that's how they're getting out of here, you know, it's like a yeah, little... they're willing to take it. Yeah, Mabel, yeah. I have Zim's a question. Like that stuff. Mabel, I have a question for you. Mm. When we get back with the clutch of droids. Where exactly are you planning on stashing them? Because it's going to definitely draw some attention to you. Well, I don't see why it matters terribly. Uh, one one droid is as good as another to these Utico f- fools. And, well, we'll make it work. Hmm? It's not like I can leave them here. Oh, certainly not. That's not what I was suggesting. It was just... I'm just worried about you and, you know, your safety. I don't want you to get in trouble for something that's, you know, not something you deserve to get into any kind of trouble for. But from what I can tell, these Utico people basically think everything on this planet belongs to them. Yes. So it's the type of trouble I'm willing to risk, certainly. So Okay. Making your way about back outside the shuttle. I assume somebody's gonna pick up the bag of supplies as like a salvage. If if not, then that's fine too. Yeah, we can kind of split that yeah. up between there's, us, I think. There's a bunch of like droid repair kits in it. There's uh uh like food and water as well as like a couple weapons, like various rifles or sidearms. Um that this guy was clearly just like pulled everything in his bunk out to try and bring to shuttle off of the Star Destroyer before it crashed. Um but making your way back out of the shuttle, um, can someone, one of you, whoever wants to, give me a perception check again? Uh-huh. Yellow, green? I'll roll one. Okay. Why not? Very well, why not? Dave, you go ahead. Have Omni roll it. You can, okay. you can help, I guess. And I'll, I'll help. Yeah, we're all very alert keen-eyed and clever people i'm sure am i good yep success Only broke by so out of, out of the corner of your eye to your left hand side near where the uh atst like wrecks have sort of piled up and like mossed over you see movement big movement like a lay like an arthropod leg or like a spidery sort of like like you know, like insectoid looking limb uh probing out. Well if you do realize that spiders are scary and spooky, right? Yeah, I mean, well I said spidery, I didn't say yeah. spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we've got Very a bit scary of a and spooky though. elf. You might want to reconsider scaring and spooking us like this. I'm just saying. Maybe it's not a spider. Maybe it's nothing at all, and we're safe. It's fine. I mean, I just want to know what your response is to seeing it, you know, before I continue. Uh, we should probably try and figure out a way to get around that. I'm not entirely sure I want to tangle with a giant whatever it, that is attached to. Does it look like we might be able to sneak away in through like a side door? Is it kind There's of? There's one way out of this hangar, and it's like ahead of you. I mean, there's the tunnel as well through the dirt, but you figure this thing probably came through there. It probably oh, it's home. Um, well, we could always wait and see if it comes through and and uh, fucks off on its own. I guess oh. my I guess my question here is hide or run. Hide will probably take a long time. Run means potential fighting engagement. Zyle is down for either. Which I know is unhelpful. Very good at running. Yeah, I think running might actually not be the worst idea. Okay. Uh, There's so much Star Destroyer to go. We're not running away from Star Destroyer. Destroyer, We're just just running to a different section of it, away from this thing. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this thing is in the hangar, and it looks big enough that it might not be able to get into a hallway. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so Let's get into a hallway and away yeah. from it. Um, yeah. So, uh, I believe for running, that'll be athletics checks, my friends. Again with this. Again. This should be fine. Ready when you are. Remember that you have a light side die to use one of you. Uh, nah. Most of us that could have. I'm that. rolling two greens here, so I'm not. I'm also best. rolling two. two. We're all rolling two greens here. We're not the athletic all right. side all right. of this. Game. It's let's not. Go. It's not super difficult of a check. So, let's see. Well, I got a success. Okay. I would do that. Uh, Sile once again, the only one who doesn't oh, get a success. I haven't. I haven't rolled a single success. This it happens. You know, it happens. Game. it happens. It happens to me a lot in this so, game. So anyway. You you see the thing, Omni sort of like goes, Ugh, and then you guys take off across the hangar, like a running as fast as you can. The protocol droid, you ran you run par past him as you're like sprinting across this this corridor. And seeing you hurry, he like sort of hurries up, but he's a protocol droid and they don't really move very you like if you start seeing C three PO run, it's that shit. Yeah, I um, I think I grab grab him with grab those him? extra successes. Like, yeah, try, and you try take and pull him off. Sure. Um you see the pile of ATST like wrecks sort of shift a little bit. Like there's this crunching, scraping noise of metal moving. Oh no! And a big claw just like comes out of the wreckage, and then another, and it stands, and it looks like it's a giant crab with the ATS <gasps> with an ATST as like a shell uh, on it, um, uh, like a big hermit crab. Like it's hermit crabbing yeah. it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That and, and is the coolest really thing cool. I've ever heard. <laughs> the mushroom crab. I'm here for it. Is is there a fan art of that? There isn't, but I mean, we came up with it and we were like, oh, yes. Yes, this thing. <laughs> um, so, chat. so, yeah, there's Please. big AT, ATST shelled hermit crab, like moss and stuff all over it. Uh, this big crab. And it, and it scuttles in a way that like... Uh, because it is so big, a scuttle is still very, like, plodding, you know what I mean? As it, like, comes along towards you, like, snapping out with its claws. Um, Z okay, Zyle is at the back. Uh, so the rest of you make it to the hallway, but Zyle is a little slow um, and is going to need to make another check for me. Um, can I get... Let me see what we need here. Can I get a cool from you, Zyle? Sure. Yep. See if you keep, keep your cool. Let me let me, let me set it up. Yeah, we're good. Got that light side if you want. Yeah, you can use the light side if you want. I don't need it. I finally oh, won't bring it to Oh, yeah! <laughs> Fucking nail. Finally. Um, so... Normally, this kind of giant hermit crab would uh, be pants shittingly terrifying, um, you know. Uh, and, but you are you're chill and cool and a chiss, you know, so you have some benefits to that, I think. Um, and you manage to keep your head, even though you're at the back of the pack, like sort of trip, trip, trip stumbling a little bit. Um, and the big claw comes in and like snaps very close behind you. Uh, oh. you know, and you just managed to like huh, slip into the hallway and like close the door. Um, I like to think the reason Xyla is slow is because the moment they realize what this is, it immediately goes from "got to get out of here" to "holy shit, that's cool." And it's like, <laughs> yeah. kind of like oh, no. oh wait, gotta run, gotta run, gotta run. Uh, yeah, there's like a momentary pause where you're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, the sound of the the crab like slamming its its claw and like trying to get it into the hallway like the small space as you like move away from it can be heard like echoing through the corridors a little bit. Uh, Did you see that thing? The thing was huge. It was absolutely monstrosity. So ah, uh -huh. oh, I love this planet. <laughs> on on the map, there is just like the biggest cross over that <laughs> Don't go in there. area. <laughs> Uh, giant really we can't come back i mean I, I think we should come back to this place and take a closer look at it when we get the chance i mean i'm just saying now that we absolutely have... not coming back oh fine fine 
I'm sure there are other giant <laughs> crabs somewhere on this horrific planet. The map says here be crabs, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you should see a doctor about that. Oof. <laughs> Oof indeed. <laughs> Moving on. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you you uh you make your way sort of like out of there. Um and uh the the protocol droid like heads off to meet with the Jawas like somewhere else in the ship. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to uh, uh what do you call it? Uh saddle you with a <laughs> with a protocol droid during your exit. Can, can I comms them to say not to scrap it on side? Yeah, so, like, yeah, of chill. course. <laughs> they're not they're not going to. Yeah. Um Maybe give it a paint job, though, so people don't immediately... <laughs> I mean, I know what they were like with C-3PO. I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. Right, Phil. So, uh, making your way through, like, more of the sections of the ship, there's a lot more of this, like, flickering anti-grav, like, uh, sort of area, but you make your way eventually to a, another section that looks like it might lead down to an armory. You know, like there are some signs or like or like notifications that would like lead that way. Um but there's a lot of like broken piping and like horribly like steam venty kind of stuff in the way of a lot of the hallways. It's difficult to traverse. Uh Zyl is spending their time as they're kind of looking around, like uh, thinking a lot about what um, is it Panikata? Is that her name? Yeah. Uh, Panikata has said about the the planet um, and uh, about what is on the ship and is probably quieter than they usually would be in this circumstance because they're kind of preoccupied with that. Uh, that sort of mentality of just like wondering if they are going to be able to find what uh, what Padakata has mentioned might be here. There so are, it's a lot of like there are several, kind of oh, sorry, sorry. weird faces weird faces that they're making as they're like <laughs> listening to the planet. It's just like it's very strange. There are several sections of the the, the these corridors where you get to them, and there are these big like gaps where it looks like caustic acid has, like, dripped from a pipe and, like, melted the Durasteel corridor. Or, like, uh, you, you have to turn around and go back and, like, or you have to, like, try and, like, traverse it, jump it, you know, these kinds of things. And it's just, like, a slow-going situation. Um, it doesn't stop you from, from getting to where you need to go and following signs, like, and you know, to this armory. You eventually find the door that would lead into the room that is, like, the armory, so to speak. Um, and opening it up, um, you see figures inside, like, like humanoid figures in stormtrooper armor, um, moving around, uh, like, um, not with any particular task, it seems, but like, they are moving, whatever, whatever it is. Alive. There's a whole bunch of equipment in here, by the way. Lots of suits of, like, plasteel armor, a bunch of E-11s, you know, some, like, Imperial uniforms, some, like, uh, uh, stun batons, like, various, various, like, different stuff. Some supplies of Fog of War, even. Uh, I wasn't expecting to run into any of them. Are these the good kind or the bad kind? Somebody want to give oh. me a perception check? Maybe. Oh, wait, actually, this might be a case where you are the best person to do it. Well, I'm thinking Omni with the scanner. Mm. Yeah, I, I was like, do I scan? Because it'll probably make noise, right? It'll probably do like, beep, beep. Are you looking for li like like life signs? Is that the scan? Yeah, the scanner. Yeah. Yeah, they they don't show up on the scanner. What do you mean they don't show up on the scanner? Are they not alive? I don't know. I... Are they like... I feel like I've heard a story about something like so this. So you're having a bunch of this conversation in like the hallway or what have you. <laughs> Whispering. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in wanna... very hushed tones. All right. Do we, do we want to 
try and see what's going on in there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. We definitely don't want to just leave it behind. Come on. We go work places after we move slowly. Maybe. All right. We're, I guess we're so going to try. And... So you're just going to try and like zombie walk into the room, Omni, like sneak in. <laughs> yeah, wanna... like I, I, don't, roll, I don't have Roll a... stealth for me. Uh, are you sure I can't yes. persuade you to no. let me roll again? <laughs> stealth. Roll stealth. This is what happens when you optimize for a specific, specific yeah. thing. Uh, is the pool ready? Yep. Oh my Beep. gosh, so sneaky. What? Uh, so it's, you, it's pretty stressful. Though, so you guess. manage to sneak, and yeah, you take some strain um, because of the threats. You manage to sneak sense. in, and you can see, like, you're by one of the weapon racks, you know, like, taking the E11 off there or something. Um... And you can see these, these like, armored figures. There's four of them in this room. Are moving in a very, like, jerky, like, sort of stop and start kind of way. Um, and the door being open, they seem to be, like, making for the door. You know, like, slowly, but they're headed in that direction. Towards where the others are waiting. Yeah. Now that I'm closer, can I, like, see what's... Because presumably there's got to be like some gaps in the armor, maybe like and see what's going on. Yeah, I like. mean you can you can definitely make like a perception or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it good to go? Yep. Aki thinks they know what's going on here, and it's cool, and it's gross, and it's wonderful. Yeah, I really hope so too. <laughs> So you can see that some of the armor, like the the rims of the, or like the the edges of the armor, has like that moss on it that you've been seeing everywhere, and like there's some like overgrowth on the troopers that like if they were alive they would have brushed off, you know, um, th like there's there's parts of their their uh, armor that are like broken or or what have you, and like clearly they are not acting under their own like will. Whatever it is, uh, I can't really give you much more information on like an observe, even with a triumph. Like, there's, there's not much I can tell you on like you see this. Although I guess triumph is like you know something, uh, and you think yeah, back some key. You key think sorry. back to the leech blooms, uh, and their skeletons inside of them, uh, situation, um, and what might be affecting these troopers' brains, xenology wise. Turn back to the others, and like I, it's a gamble to try it, but I like say out loud, I'm like the big control by mushrooms, maybe. Oh, like a parasite that takes over your brain and turns you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, everybody's gonna have to roll initiative now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, are they gonna react to right. sound? Oh, no. Let's hope not. Yeah, as soon as you go, like they're being controlled by mushrooms, the two nearest you basically like jerk around towards you, you know, and that's like we're weird, gonna like... fight mushroom zombies, yay! Uh, yeah. So it's time. It's time to fight. Hang on, let me trash some stuff so that there's okay, good space. Uh, all right, you may roll initiative at your desire. Is this cool? Or is this village vigilance? Uh, this is, I think you're prepared, so it's the prepared one, which I believe is cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah we're. It's obvious that these things were dangerous. Okay, All right, I've got my three PCs. Let me roll some some NPCs. I just need to roll on like a random machine. Mushroom zombies, NPCs. we're gonna fight. Uh, Mushroom zombies, it's gonna be alright. I mean, it, I mean, it might be. I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be all right. I believe in us. We can okay. do this. Okay, so the zombies. There are gonna be three of them. Yeah, that's. Just, I'll uh, hand kill the you. fourth one keeps running. Yeah, that's just like my random sheet for rolling because it has no edits on it. I can just edit it to be whatever I want. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So, uh, looking at the initiative, we got one, one, oh, one, oh, oh, one, one, oh, and oh, one. 
So this goes here, and then we're good. We're set on the PC or PC, PC, NPC, PC, NPC, NPC. So all of these troopers are within short range of you. Like they're not engaged, but they're like in the same area as you uh, to start with. Uh, there's there's another one that doesn't seem to have in, been engaged with the group and has like wandered into the corridor and like kept walking past you. Like past us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That like, seems bad. Like it's going somewhere. Um, but it is up to you, it is up to you. PCs PCs first. So, uh, remember how the system works. You get to choose who among you goes first. Uh, and then every turn we get new choices. Yep. So, who right. among you goes first? I feel, I feel like uh, Zyle uh, sees the rack of weapons that are available, and um, even though they have the slick throw on their back, uh, I think that their first instinct is to reach for something that will work uh, at a little bit closer range as well. So, if they can get to the weapons rack, they I'm probably going to use a movement. You can use a movement to, to get there. Yeah. I'm going to use a movement to get there and try and grab one of the one of the weapons that might uh, there are, help in a closer there are range. A, I don't know if any of them work, but, there, you know. There are a whole bunch of blaster carbines on, like, various racks um, because that's, like, the Stormtrooper uh, default. Uh, but there are also, like, pistols and sidearms available to you if you want to go for, like, a blaster pistol as well if you yeah. want something on short range. Um, so a pick between like the weapons and then you're more than welcome to use them because moving there and then incidental action to pick up and then action to shoot, I guess. Yeah. Um, what do I need to do to, there's also like, to... there's also melee stuff like stun batons or yeah, wh whatever, if you want to go that route, but Ooh, a stun baton might be fun. I mean, it's a different skill. Uh, yeah, I don't have. Well, I mean, I'm not really great at melee or bronze, so um, <laughs> it's it's all the same to me uh, when it comes down to it. Or not brawl, but gunnery or melee. Like it, it's all the same to me, basically. Anyways, um, yeah, I I'll, I'll grab a I'll grab a stun baton. Why not? Um, okay, uh, I, I'm willing to get down and down and dirty with with all one right, of these so things. So you so you grab you grab a stun baton off the rack and. Mm -hmm. I would say that you're close enough to be engaged with it, so you can take a swing if you want. Sure, and I roll melee for this, right? You do, yes, but I need to look up my weapon profile for this stun. Okay, ball. thanks. Uh, let me... I have an NPC who has one. <laughs> uh, I think it is the Stimhound. Let me check. Oh, I didn't see it on the reference. Uh, okay, it's not perfect, but it'll do. All right, uh, okay. feel free to roll roll melee. Cool, this should go well. Oh, wait, hmm. uh, you're in melee. Ah. Yeah, okay, success, yay! Oh, oh, uh, cool. So you so you hit the stormtrooper a whack on the on the like the back with the sun baton, and there's a loud cracking noise as you hit the plasteel armor. Um, the trooper takes some damage, uh, and it's clear that. The plasteel had absorbed like a fair amount of it because, like, I mean, it's like riot gear, basically. Um, but uh, that you you've had some effect, and it like kind of groans and rolls its shoulder and like reaches for you. Uh, PC number two, Mabel or Omni, who's up next? Off to you. Oh, you okay, got a bunch of threat so... there. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give one of my uh, my next trooper to act will have a bonus. So one of them ran. Not ran is just like shuffling down the hall past you. Shuffling down the hall past us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna deal with that. That seems like it's gonna end poorly for us. Okay. So Mabel will cut that way, and kind of clomp after this thing. Um, and yeah, I guess she's just going to like run up behind them, and hit them really, really hard in the back of the head. <laughs> okay. Or lack of like a better yeah, place just, to hit them, gonna... or like an understanding of the anatomy underlying this thing. I'm just gonna smack it. But yeah, I figure if I hit it hard enough, high up, I can like maybe knock it over or disorient it or whatever. So that's my plan. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, like my first action is to move, and then my second will be to hit it 
Yep, which um, is two purples. Yep. Hey, success. So, so I get a success. You whap it for you don't get any critical stuff, obviously, because you don't have nearly enough successes. But you whap it in the back of the head. Uh, it sort of shakes a little bit and turns around to face you, uh, and and uh, looks like it it its approach is just going to be to grab you. You know, like it doesn't yeah, have like it's weapons. just trying to reach yeah. out for me. Better uh, me than one of our Jawa friends. So NPC NPC it. wise, yeah, I'm going to use my stormtrooper uh, or my my cordyceps controlled stormtrooper uh, uh, that is uh, next to Mabel um, in the corridor. And it's going to try and attack you. Uh, it's basically just going to try and pound you with fit with its fists, um, which, you know, I don't know how effective it'll be, but we'll find out. It's one success effective. Uh, what's your threshold, Mabel? Like armor wise. Um. So I don't think I have any armor. Yeah, but your brawn should give I you... I have s- soak one, though, yeah, or something. So- you, you should have soak from your toughness, basically, or whatever, your brawn. <laughs> I gotta look. Uh, so, because I have heavy clothing or whatever, so I have an extra soak. So my soak is two. Okay, your soak is two. Yeah, your soak is two. Because um, it's listed up at the top with so wounds and you take So you take two damage uh, as it, like punches at your you know torso with fists that don't seem to care if they hurt it yeah did did you just fill that in on my sheet no i didn't okay why am i already at wounds two i don't know probably from that fight like ages and ages ago you can clear that and just it's fine okay i'm at two again okay uh so that was an action uh i should have given an upgrade but that's fine um, PC number three, that would be our wonderful Omni. Awesome. Um, scan around for something that can make fire. Ah, you're looking for something that can make fire. This is, uh, the armory of a starship, however, and creating flaming cones of death is not exactly, uh, beneficial to such an environment. Um and so uh there are zombies. There aren't any flamethrowers or anything of that that sort here. You could detonate a blaster pack, like an ammo pack, if you wanted to try and like jury rig it. Um, but that's more of an explosion than a fire. I kinda don't now this is the question I've been thinking of for a little while. Is Omni a pacifist or because they're scared or because they object? And I'm not sure. I feel like that is up to you, and in this moment, maybe a good time to decide. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think what I'm probably going to do um, is I was already grabbing stuff before this all started. Yeah, of course. Spoke. Um, I'm probably going to grab as much as I can and run out and. Uh, <laughs> shout to um to Zyosh, like quick get out there we'll see you live behind us sort okay. of thing sure yeah no i like yeah. that so I like interact that and just grab as so much as I you can. grab like a fucking armful of stuff off the rack and like scoop it into a sack or or what have you and yeah. and my loot and sack pelt past Zyle into the corridor um my two stormtroopers are gonna make swings against Zyle. Um, because they are within range, they move to be engaged and then attack. Hiya, hiya. Ooh, two successes. Um, so you take. What's your soak, Zyle? So I have a soak of one. Uh, okay. Um, I feel like that's low, but I don't know exactly if you're. Yeah, wrong do you have heavy clothing? I have um. Yeah, it says you have a soak of one, but hmm. Yeah, that's. Where is my armor? Is it in your item inventory? Yeah, it's armored clothing here. All uh, right, yeah. You don't have any details. On... Oh yeah, one soak on the yeah. armor. One soak, one defense. Uh, okay. Well, I'll worry about that in a bit. 
Um, so, soak soak equals brawn plus armor. Yeah, so your brawn stat should also add to your soak. Oh, uh, friends, just so you know. Then I have a soak of three. I Wonderful. Guess. Okay, slightly oh, better. Oh yeah, so should I. Yeah. Okay. So I take so one. So take less take one less. Yeah, Zyle's so yeah. probably a three. Yeah. Uh, cool. I just wanted to make sure we were we were on the right page. Uh, there. Uh, it's it hasn't come up a lot because we haven't done a lot of fighting. Um, so stormtroopers attack. Uh, melee plus successes means you take four on the first one, Zyle, as it like it beans you around the head. Uh, and then a and one soak. on the second. No, no, I'm telling you with that with with the soak. With added. okay, 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 cool, 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 cool. So I have five. Cool. Yeah. So you take five total as it as they smack you around. Uh, but then it's PC turn, which would be your turn, Zyle. Uh, if you, you uh, wanna, if you want to act yeah. on, yeah. Om- Actually, it's it's whoever's turn they want. But if you want to act on Omni's plan of like run away and seal it behind you, then it's probably best to go first. Uh, mm-hmm. Is Mabel also already out of Mabel's the in the hallway? Way? Cool, cool. Then yeah, yeah, I guess Zyle will will follow suit and uh, extricate themselves from the situation. Okay, so you move into the hallway. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're short distance from the zombies, but you're in the hallway and they're in the the, the room. Close the door, close the door, close the door. <laughs> okay. The next PC check, I imagine, will be Omni trying to close the door. Yes? Uh, yes. Actually, I'm going to go next oh. and just waste time and ruin <laughs> this plan. Yeah. No, that was, that's, I, I would like to just ruin everything. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Like, <laughs> I ruin everything all the time. Like, every time I open Dave, my mouth. what's your plan? Um, yeah, I'm going to interact with the environment. Yeah, okay. So, um, you get the store closed with a, me- with a successful mechanics check. Like, if you, uh, you know, took it on, uh, hit it on the appropriate hinge and then, like, uh, you, uh engaged the, the locking mechanism manually, you know? Yep. Okay. Um, ba- 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 ba. how are we doing for light side points? I'm pretty good at this, but I feel like it's pretty important because if they get more turns, we're going to go down real quick. Um, are we cool with me using the light side point? Use it. Oh yeah, please. Okay. Okay. All good. Yep. Oh wait. Yeah. Uh, hang. Uh, sorry, the GM pool has two extra greens in it that it shouldn't have. Um, oh. but it's okay because they were they were no they were both blank on your roll so it, it yeah we can just ignore them. It didn't change anything. Um, <laughs> so uh, success, wonderful. Uh, you you basically like push the door closed in their face and like seal it. Uh, the armory will be hard to access. You've got the armful of stuff that you have, but like those two, zo- those two zombies are locked in there and Mabel is still tangling with the one in the hallway. So yep. that one is going to take its turn and try and beat on you again, Mabel. Yeah. For every threat I'm getting that you're not saying, am I just bumping up strain? That's what I've been doing before. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I know, I, I know I haven't been mentioning it, but. No, uh, I just assumed that's what so, we did so with spare ones. It tries to it tries to get at you again, but instead of doing like a melee, you know, punching attack or what have you, Mabel, it like exhale like there's like this puff of like white red spore like off of it um from the like gaps in its armor. Um unfortunately you're a droid and it doesn't do shit. <laughs> so uh but it but it acts unintelligently, so you know, it it yeah. it's a th- you're a threat. It's trying to stop you. Um, well, that's fortunate. Yeah, uh, you're up. Um, so this thing has like got its hands on it's me. It's right next to you. Yeah, it's engaged. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I kind of just want to like tackle it to the ground and hammer it with my fists. Yeah, bring it down. Um. So, I guess that just means really that I am just punching it with my weapon okay yeah give it give it the give it the business okay success so i get another one success hit all right you you hammer at its helmet as you like take it to the ground in this like tackling stance and you smash the helmet into like little plastial pieces with your fist uh and you can see like the face beyond it is like dead you know like there's no way that they are alive like the the eyes are like rotted out basically like it's just gross um but they stop moving when you like destroy the face if you yeah. know what i mean yeah um, so it still needs the body to be semi functional yeah, so there's or like there's like a, a twitchy spasm through the whole thing and then it like flops 
limply. And that's the combat, because the other two are locked in a room they can't get out of. <laughs> yeah, they can think about what they've done. Except they can't, because they're zombies. <laughs> I'm not sure, but that's probably in the top 10 scariest things I've seen on this planet. Maybe top ever... five. I think I keep forgetting about the um, the uh, 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 parasitic um, potential of this planet and the ability that it has to kind of take over you. And then, I mean, it, in a way, it means that this, this planet is constantly recycling its life. Like nothing ever truly dies here. Kind of you're, not, you're not more concerned that it tried to recycle your face off. I mean, if I was going to die, it'd be nice to know that, you know, some part of me is still of use to the planet. Mabel, I think you might need to give her a check when we get back. Give then, them. Sorry. Yeah. A check when we get back. Yeah, and Mabel is Please like standing up and like dusting these spores spirit. off of her care of, yeah, off of her sort of, like. You sort of like aerosol you aerosolize yeah. it as you like uh, you brush it and it just sort of like floats gently to the ground in this like white red pattern. Yeah, maybe don't breathe deeply uh around me for a bit. <laughs> She's like trying to dust it out of her clothes. Well that's what we have the rebreathe is full. Yeah. What did you manage to grab there, Omni? Oh, the... You've um, basically got an armful of blaster carbines because you were picking through the you were picking through the like the like armory section and you just sweeped a shelf, right? Yeah, basically. Um, I guess we just add it to the loot pile that we found in the. Um, you do have a belt. You did have a belt, however, like a utility belt or something. And there are two. <laughs> there are two grenades on it. Sick. <laughs> we took the rags um, places. It's Omni birth. It's Omni's birthday. <laughs> Grenades! Oh God! Uh, I'm not like, gonna come like, in quickly. You, you, really you're not quickly sure. double check everything's fine. You're always. not sure what type of grenades they are, but they're certainly some kind of imperial issue. You know, like trooper uh, related ordinance. I'm sure this will end well for all of us. It will be fine. Omni has bombs. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, all right let's uh continue on then i mean if anything we could potentially come back here now that we have some some uh idea of what's inside there and a bit more weaponry to kind of um fight them could potentially you know come back and do a more thorough search later so or even blow them up with one of the grenades i mean you know that the jawas are going to come through like after you so to speak but yeah. it, like you know Sleeping the room. Of the essence. All right, so, let's uh, keep on keeping on then. Yeah, Mabel marks the door uh, as being a yeah. dangerous place. <laughs> okay, she yeah, like scribbles like, a biohazard zombies. symbol on it yeah. or something. Yeah, a zombie's canonical in Star Wars is the word zombies. They are now. I've they they have been. You know what I mean? Like there are there are instances of like zombie-ish things happening in Star Wars. Yeah, canon. I just meant the, uh, the word. I don't know the like the word is a word. So in the same way that any word is canon in they're Star Wars, like, you, you know, they're like raccoon spawns and stuff. But there's raccoons. There's also like si cool. there's like Sith related like force zombies. There's Dathomirian zombies. There's yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but anyway, oh. moving ahead, you like after you warn about what's going on, you make your way into what looks like a series of private quarters that might lead up to the bridge, you know, like an important part of the, the ship after quite a long travel. And moving through these rooms, you find sort of like one of the rooms has been incredibly like cratered out as if somebody detonated a thermal detonator in it or like there was some kind of like big explosion that like took it entirely to pieces. Um, you also notice that the escape pods are all missing from this, like, you know, like, as you move past, like, the areas that people would evacuate to, the escape pods have all been all been dropped out. Like, there, there are none here. There are none left. Um, it's certainly a way to say you quit 
by throwing a thermal detonate in your I mean, boss's room. You know, and it is in Mabel. It is in the position that you would consider to be like the co- the commander's quarters, like the captain's yeah. quarters. The, yeah. There's just it's this crater, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, but there is there is like a special like guest room, Mabel, that you know that exists on these these ships for like quote unquote honored guests classified. Right. Yeah, yeah, for um, special And so making people. your way through, like, several small corridors, you find that room. And looking around from the doorway, which is open, by the way, you can see that there's a body in the center of the room, like, slumped in a fancy chair, uh, like, rotted down to the skeleton, as most of the corpses in here are, um, wearing sort of, like, black robes, um... And like blaster marks, like scorch the shit out of this like this this person's attire, and mm. and when you look into the room like a little further and you look around like the actual whole room, you can see there's like twenty corpses of like stormtrooper or stim trooper geared like people in this room as if they'd been blown back from the location this this other person was like standing or sitting. Uh, when they got shot and like slammed yep. against the walls and you can hear the faint hiss like the little like click hiss noise of uh like fog of war injectors going off but there's no there's nothing in them you know what i mean like this like yeah. automated system of like of like this drug trying to be like uh sent through the the stim trooper like armor uh that just like isn't there isn't work. It's still it's still trying, but it is, there's nothing to put there. You know, yeah. this like mechanical clicking, hissing noise from like twenty various corpses. So um, Mabel turns to the other to the other two and just says, "Maybe give me some time here, and carry on." Yeah. And she's gonna like go through and kind of sort out all of these. There is something things. else. There is something else of note uh, that I should mention, like for yeah. the rest mm. of you. And that is that in the hands of the man in the black robes, there is a an amulet of some kind uh, clasped in his hand. And it has this circular pattern to it with three vertical lines like on it. And it seems to be made of like stone. And he's he's got it like in his skeletal hands, like grasped around the little like string. Um, clutched Wild sees that and goes, tightly, I don't think I'm leaving. <laughs> clutched tightly to his chest, yeah. Um, Omni I... actually just like scream, like once looks past you, Mabel, and like screams in terror, because that's a being raised in oh yeah where where they were. That is like that absolute boogeyman that Omni just assumes. I mean, just, and like, like honestly, incredibly scared. Databanks, databanks wise, Mabel would know this is the kind of person who would be like special guest of the captain, you know, but who unofficially is probably like the emperor's hand or you yeah, know, like some force force some user, very important person, you know, some person yeah. who beats all the systems without being ranked in any of them somehow. Um, uh, no, Zyle, Zyle sees that amulet and goes, "There's like the thing." <laughs> happens in their brain yeah, goes, the shape is very similar to one you have seen before I think in a I'm void. going to yes uh they kind of uh step up next to mabel and and i'm like no I, I think um i think there's something here of interest to me as well that sense of unease in this room is stronger than anywhere else like it's sick to your stomach like like dread looking looking at this body basically are you allowed to take voluntary strain yeah, I mean, if you want to, yeah, you take strength. I'm gonna strength. give myself full strength. Okay. Jeez Louise. I just, I just wanted to you, you're, reflect you're mechanically right? that it is. I mean, I mean, based no. on the background, I feel like it is just like the yeah. scariest thing that exists in the galaxy. <laughs> just like kind of falling over, just like shuffling Omni. backwards. Omni. I assure you they're quite dead. Quite dead. I don't think I understand. Yeah, and Mabel kind of shrugs and is like, she doesn't pay particular mind to the like important corpse. She's just like going through these troopers. Yeah, you're like checking the troopers. 
And like, yeah. you know, like I imagine you sort of like shutting off the mechanisms on like the various helmets or, or what have you. Yeah. Like, and she's like one. noting their call sign or like designation or whatever. And it's yeah. like updating automatically in her log Ta- of like personnel down, records. Taking down and checking off the TK numbers of the various like, yeah, troopers. Yeah, basically. I think this is like, she has like a bit of a compulsion to do this yeah. even. Like, yeah. And the, the bodies are all, like, skeletons, basically, yeah. like, in terms of the decomposition. The smell, there's no real, sm- like, smell. Uh, there has been, like, some growth in here, but it's, like, you know, moss on the bodies or, like, small mushroom growth. Not, like, a lot. As if the power of, like, the corpse itself has, like, pushed it away, you know? Mm. Well, speaking of the corpse, uh, yeah. I think Zyle is going to meander over there. Sure. And, uh... I guess they're going to take a really a closer look at the amulet first before taking yeah. it. So he has it grasped in these his skeletal hands, like one of his hand, like fingers are wrapped into the like band of it, you know, like uh, and the other hand is like clasped on the on the like medallion itself, the amulet itself. Uh, you can see the symbol that would be like the same as the Vodian like temple that you've seen, you know, the, like the three like straight columns that are like the force ruins that people use as tourism, but like in a more complete form with a sort of like an arch. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, you know, he, he has it like clasped in his fingers. The ro- the robe that he's wearing or like the, the clothing that the, the guy's wearing is this like black sort of like very richly, you know, richly appointed and embro- slightly embroidered, like, uh, cloth that doesn't seem to have uh, had any issue with the age of 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 how long it's been sitting here. It's just Kyle's little, about to just strip this whole just, skeleton it's down. Just, it's just, just it's just a little dusty, and it has like twelve blaster burns on it at various places. Uh, as as like you can imagine the scene, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to try and take this uh, amulet. From the so, okay. skeletal hands. Right. So you reach out, you touch the surface of the amulet, and the skeletal hand that is wrapped in the band reaches out and grabs your wrist, and that's where we're going to end this, this session for today. <laughs> I'm sure this is fine. This is going to be fine. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what we're going to do. How scary it was. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Style doesn't know. They have no context for any yeah, of this. It's that's that's what, what makes it so cool. You were like, oh, this is really cool. Mabel was like, ten to the people, and Omni was just absolutely. <laughs> Omni was just like, scared. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've heard the I, stories. And we're just three together that we're so different. Yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. I, there were some other sections of the Sunderer, but I wanted to get to that scene on our end point, uh, oh, yeah. which I think was, yeah. was smart. Um, and we'll we'll be back next week for more uh, Star Wars Desperate Gamble action. But for now, why don't we find out where you could find each other, uh, where we can find you, friends, on the internet? Uh, let's start with Aki. Go, Aki. Hi, everybody. I am Aki. You can find me on Twitter at mixgini in a bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. You can find my entire streaming schedule over on my personal Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I D A R E A K I. And next Friday, following uh, Desperate Gamble, you might see me doing something uh, very interesting over on my personal channel. One, streaming again for the very first time in a long time. And two, uh, very specifically streaming for a a huge event. Uh, I will uh, have more details about that once uh, things have been confirmed and arranged and all that stuff. But I'm really excited. It should be a lot of fun. Wonderful. Dave, you want to go next? Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. And once again, thank you so much to Elf and also the Desperate Gamble Discord just for just for letting me be hermit crab in, a- hermit in crab ATSD was a fucking genius. that was very cool yeah. for like three hours a week like i want to play this campaign more sorry I mean, there's week, stuff about me dave will. underscore the underscore human on twitter um but i'm not doing a huge amount outside of this and the um candle keep stream will be on monday yeah at the same time uh andrew you want to go next 
Uh, yeah, so I'm Andrew. You can follow me on Twitter at Commuting Crow. Uh, and I have a uh, upcoming tabletop role playing game that's going to release at some point called Girl by Moonlight, which is tragic, tragic magical girls forged in the dark. So if you're into that, you can check me out. I like the bad one. <laughs> uh, I'm me. I'm Elf. Hello. Sorry. I was. I've been building up to that scene for like five weeks, <laughs> trying to get get you guys there. Uh, so I'm so excited that I finally got to like actually do it. Um, Gonna but I have four court. But yeah. So um, I'm Distracted Elf. You can find me at twitchtv elf or on Twitter at Distracted Elf. Um, I've been doing a lot of, on my personal stream, I've been doing a lot of, uh, strategy games recently, some Crusader Kings and that kind of stuff, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, might be some Resident Evil soon, because, I mean, I want to play the new one. Um, and, uh, what else? Uh, Candlekeep stream, uh, on Mondays on D&D's channel with, uh, some of the nerds that are, they are here with me, these, the two, two either side of me, um, are, uh, are also on that. Um what else no, i think that's it um also gm stream for this session if you want to if you want to hear me talk about what we just did and then what we're gonna do in the next episode you can find that on thursdays at 1 1 p.m uh pst uh on roll 20s channel people uh, that i pay for the phone <laughs> to know who they are already, yeah. so. the uh the other thing you should do, of course, my dear friends, is if you liked watching us play on Roll20, you should sign up for an account for free on Roll20.net. You can sign up for an account, and it costs you nothing. Uh, you, too, can be uh, assaulted by uh, Cordyceps-style stormtrooper zombies or uh, uh, terrified of Force-related Sith corpses. Um, this is gonna be fun! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so you should sign up for free, Roll20.net. Uh, anything else I should have said that I didn't say? Oh, yeah, we have a Discord. You should join the Discord if you want to, like, talk about planning with me or you want to talk about, like, the, the world in general or just want to nerd out about a Star Wars stuff. Uh, the Desperate Gamble Discord is a great place to do that. Uh, and uh, see you later. Have a good one, friends. See you next week for Bye. spooky, spooky things happening. Spooky. Yay. Bye. Bye.